hybrid in intensity. I hate losing, you know. We beat them pretty bad last year. And if we win, we get into the playoffs. Everybody involved should respect the rivalry. We lose a draw. Um, and I will do my utmost to respect that type of rivalry. Uh, a tremendous, such a tremendous rivalry, probably the best in the world state. It's the 82nd TNT game as the Tonawanda Warriors take on the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks. It's the Adelphia Cable Sports High School Football Game of the Week. Welcome to the 82nd edition of the Dynamite Game. The North Tonawanda Lumberjacks take on the Tonawanda Warriors here from Clinton Small Stadium in Tonawanda, New York. Hello, everyone. I'm Walter John Sears along with my good friend and colleague, Frank Stewart. Frank, a little chilly, but a fine game. Two good teams this year. Yeah, no doubt about it. For the first time in a long, long time, the Tonawanda team has a real good representative team on the field and one of their best shots in years to regain some glory for the town of Tonawanda tonight. Al, this should be a real dandy of a contest. Tonawanda at 5-2, and two, hosting the 4-3 and three North Tonawanda Lumberjacks. And no matter how good or bad these games have been in the past and how good one team is and how poor the other team is, this is the game that both North Tonawanda and Tonawanda point to all season long, and this is the game that could make a season for a losing-type team. Interesting, uh, this year that we have teams with winning records and a playoff berth at stake for the possible winner of this game. North Tonawanda, by virtue of their big win over the Lockport Lions last week, which you saw right here on Adelphia Cable, Channel 10. And they were led by quarterback Aaron Wisco. Wisco, an outstanding game, 13 out of 23, 205 yards, two touchdown passes, including the winning touchdown passes. And when Wisco is on, he'll look to his split end, number 24, Danny Maines. Maines, a 4-5 sprinter in the 40-yard run. And also a big game last week for number 33 split end Wally Wisniewski. Wally uh, had an outstanding game and he caught the winning touchdown pass. He had six receptions. Frank, uh, when we talk about Tonawanda, they have great running backs. Yes, they surely do, Walt. Number 32, Andy Bensick is a very strong runner inside the tackles. He's the guy that gets the tough yards for them and when they want breakaway speed to the outside, they'll rely on Mark Prolowitz, number 34. Both of these guys have rushed combined for over a thousand yards this year and they are the two key components in the offense for the Tonawanda Warriors and accumulating that 5-2 and two record this year. When we talk about keys to the game, first we'll talk about the visiting Lumberjacks of North Tonawanda. They are big and strong on the offensive and defensive lines, and the key to the games for North Tonawanda will be, one, to stop the running backs Benson and Prelowitz from having big games. Number two, to get the passing game going. North Tonawanda is a passing team, and Aaron Wisco is an outstanding passer. If they can get him going, they'll have a good chance to win this game. And third, and very important for any team, don't turn the ball over. The keys for North North Tonawanda. Now for Tonawanda to win this game, what are their keys? Well, very simply, as we talked about just a moment ago, they have to rely on the two main men in their backfield, Andy Benzik and Mark Prolowitz, to run the ball, control the clock as much as possible, keep their ground game moving forward. The second thing, obviously, is to slow down Aaron Wisco and that NT passing attack as best as they possibly can and limit NT to short pickups and no long gains against them. And the third thing is, we understand that there may be seven to 10,000 people here, and they've got to have the crowd on their side. It's got to be a big advantage on Clint at, uh, here at Clint Small Stadium. Well, on the eve before Halloween, Frank, on Beggar's Night indeed, who will come away with the big candy? Will it be Tonawanda or North Tonawanda, and who will have their playoff hopes crushed after this game? Well, it should be an interesting outcome as uh, both teams are finally out on the field and they're getting their final warm-ups in. The crowd really starting to fill in here. We think this is going to be a dandy contest between two teams with on the upswing for a change. We look forward to a good one. Oh, well, we're looking forward to it. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. As the father of a disabled child, I know the difference therapeutic riding can make. 
It gives children and adults with disabilities new hope. It brings joy and pride and confidence into their lives. For more information on how therapeutic writing can help someone you love, call 1-800-369-RIDE. They were young. They were willing to risk their lives for a vision. From their passionate fight came one of the most radical doctrines of all time, the Constitution, a doctrine that places the power in the individual, enabling each of us to dream, to inspire, to achieve. Our system is most vital when each of us participates in it. When we vote, we keep this passion alive. Well, we're taking a look at Clinton Small Stadium in Tonawanda, New York, and this is the site of the 82nd meeting between these two fine teams, the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks and the Tonawanda Warriors. And both teams coming into this game with uh, playoff aspirations and hopes on this Halloween Eve, and both teams still alive for wild card spots. In fact, North Tonawanda still with a slight outside chance of a Division I title. Let's take a look at the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks offensive line, and they'll start on their line. Smith at left tackle. Seward is the left guard. Burt, the center. The right guard is Gelpart, and Red Ghost is the right tackle, and they are very big. Wisco is the quarterback. He's outstanding. Piper is the fullback. Hacker and Snipkowski are the halfback. Snipkowski with 712 yards, their leading ball carrier. Danny Maines, a 4-5 sprinter in the 40. The split end, Wally Wisniewski, number 33. Big game last week with a winning touchdown catch the split ends. Defense for North Tonawanda. DeRosa is the left guard. Left tackle is Benson. Burke, the right guard. And the right tackle is Gelpart. And we mentioned they are very big. Wisco, Red Ghost, Olrum, and Fisher, the linebacking core for the North Tonawanda Jacks. And in the defensive secondary, Meisingberg, Hacker, and Snepkowski is the safety man. North Tonawanda coming in with a record of four wins and three losses, a bit of a disappointing season for them under their head coach. Dave Anastasi in his third year. This is Glenn Bateman, his first year. The Tonawanda Warriors coming in with a record of five and two. They have an opportunity to break the jinx here. Last year they lost 49 to 27. The Tonawanda offensive line, Eisenhut, the left tackle, Sander, the left guard. Drew will be your starting center. Case, the right guard, and the right tackle will be Burroughs. The quarterback will be Ken Dewey, who is a senior. Halfback is Bensick, and the other halfback, Prelowitz, they are both outstanding running backs. Siniskalski is the Z-back, or flanker. Tight end is Harvey, and the split end is Matt Gross. Matt Gross has excellent speed. On the defensive line, Andy Yeager, Johnny Burroughs on the left side. Dave Kamirsky is the nose guard. McClure and Federson are on the right side. Siniskalski, the left outside linebacker. Their leading tackler is their middle linebacker, Jason Frazier, and he leads the club in sacks and tackles. And Chris Moscato on the right side. Mike Baker is the left corner. Free safety is Mark Prelowitz. And Matt Gross is the right corner. Now we have an interesting series of events. You just look, look at the split screen shot on the left side, Dave Anastasi. Dave, this is his uh, second set. He coached North Tonawanda for many years, came back, and now this is his third season on his second stint. Back with North Tonawanda and Glenn Bateman, the rookie coach on the right side, his first year. And Frank, uh, these clubs looking for a playoff spot. We could very well tell you it's very complicated, so we can't get into everything, but the loser is out. Yeah, no doubt about it. A uh, critical contest uh, to start the year as you see some of the tidbits associated with this game. It's the 82nd get-together between these two fine teams, Tonawanda and North Tonawanda, thus the TNT Dynamite game. North Tonawanda leads the series, 46 wins to 25 losses with 10 ties between the two teams over the years. North Tonawanda won last year, 49-27 to in the real offensive burst for both teams. And this year, unusual for both clubs, actually, uh, especially for Tonawanda. It's been a long time since they've had a real strong program. They both have a shot at making the playoffs. But the, how do you do that? You must win here tonight. The loser is going to have a difficult time. In fact, in both cases, I believe uh, the, uh, the loser will be out. So very, very difficult uh, uh, situation here to determine who will move on or who will not. But the easiest way to do it is the winner uh, has the best chance and does go on. And those that lose will not continue playing football for the rest of the year. There you see the uh, head officials as they gather around the uh, 
uh, the captains for both sides, and we do have those names for you. Don O'Brien is the referee. The umpire is Andy Podlucky. Uh, Paul Gagliardi is your field judge, and Jim Hutter is your linesman for today's game. And the Northtown Awanda Marching Band, which always does such a great job, is going to come out, and they will uh, bring us our national anthem in just a moment. But you see, again, the officials uh, right along the near sideline as they get their final comments in. And there was some quite a bit of discussion before the game started with the officials as to uh, the rules and uh, how they're going to be interpreted under certain situations. There you see Glenn Bateman, who's done a great job here at Tonawanda turning the program around. Five wins and two losses this year. They really struggled in the last, oh, six, seven years that we've been covering football for Adelphia Cable. And uh, Glenn Bateman in his first year has really got things going. He's got the right uh, uh, attitude with the kids out there, and they uh, really responded to his coaching style, and thus the, uh, the very good record that they have thus far, and they'd like to continue on into playoff action. The information that uh, was gathered and given to us is that North Tonawanda leads this series 46-25 wins for Tonawanda and 10 ties, and last year it was North Tonawanda winning it in a walk, 49-27 to over Tonawanda in a game that was really not that close. So now would you join us at home with the marching bands for the playing of the national anthem and to honor your country. Okay, we'll take a break. Just about set for the kickoff in a very, very important game for both clubs because of the playoff situation, Frank, and we'll have to wait and see who will get the ball first. But one thing we should note that uh, when we were coming into the park, the Tonawanda News put out a special TNT edition with front page coverage for this game, 25 cents on the special edition, and the, the entire front page was uh, involving the TNT classic, and they had pictures of both teams. The starting lineups, the entire rosters, they did a great job. Yeah, they sure did. And uh, mentioned in the front page the things that the coaches felt were most important for their winning hopes tonight. Uh, fourth quarter comments from Glenn Bateman hoping that his team can get into the fourth quarter, be close, and then uh, secure a win in the fourth quarter. And for North Tonawanda, they need to come up with a big, big game effort uh, to take on and defeat uh, Tonawanda here. Uh, we're still waiting a little bit as the large, large band contingent from North Tonawanda is exiting the field. We still have to have the introduction of the starting lineups. Uh, so that's going to take some time. This is quite a uh, circus-like atmosphere almost in a sense. A very, very festive occasion for a lot of the people here in the TNT area of Western New York. And as we said, some of the comments that we heard uh, from some of the officials associated with the game were that this game can draw anywhere tonight with both teams vying for the playoffs and the loser going home and the winner moving on anywhere from seven to 10,000 people here for a high school football game. And an 82 year rivalry between these two teams as you see the Lumberjacks players being introduced. That by the way is Jeff Snepkowski, number 42. He is a player to really watch in this contest while he's had some superior games the last couple of years. Yes, Jeff Snepkowski uh, is their main man out of the backfield. 712 yards and nine touchdowns for him on 123 carries, a 5.8 average. There you saw their top receiver, number 24, Dan Maines, 32 catches, 630 yards and two touchdowns coming in. But there's the guy that won the game last week with the help of his teammates, Frank, Wally Wisniewski. It was nice to look at a player like Wally Wisniewski who coming into that game had but 12 catches all year, has six catches, gets the winning touchdown pass, had a great game. He sure did. And just before that, as they continue on with the starting uh, lineups, that game uh, against 
uh, Lockport was a very difficult game for Wally Wisniewski in the sense that just the couple of plays previous when they had an earlier possession late in the contest for North Tonawanda, Wisco hit him with a pass over the middle. He attempted to get a few more yards out of it, fumbled the football away, and uh, he was just devastated as he came off the field. In fact, uh, took the helmet off in disgust. Went back out on the field, though. His team got one more chance, and he really closed it up with a beautiful catch after a nice pass route into the end zone, and Wisco put it right on the mark. And, you know, you, you go from a go-to a hero overnight or, or really in a matter of seconds sometimes in high school athletics, and there was a situation where Wally Wisniewski did a great job. Well, if this is your first opportunity to watch high school football, which I'm sure many of the viewers out there haven't viewed high school football before, you'll see an outstanding passer in Wisco and an outstanding passing scheme by North Tonawanda, something that most high schools really don't rely upon, Frank. But they're a different type of a high school team in that they're more of a passing team than a running team. Yeah, no doubt about it. It is unusual. Normally, the coaching strategy here is, you know, on the high school level is to maintain possession of the football, use up the clock, and really grind it out, trying to overpower the opposition. Oh, the Tanawanda fans really getting into it on this side of the field. But uh, with North Tanawanda this year and the ability that their receivers have along with uh, the great passer Aaron Wisco, they've opened up their attack so that they're almost unstoppable when their things are clicking right, just as the Buffalo Bills can be. No doubt about it. Congratulations to the Buffalo Bills as they came back with an outstanding last-minute drive to defeat the New York Jets 24-20 as Jim Kelly came up big late in the game and it keeps their hopes alive for that division Title. Well, now the Tonawanda faithful really rooting on their team, and they have a tough chore because if North Tonawanda win this game, they'll probably qualify for a playoff spot because Jamestown and Lockport are playing each other head to head. However, if Tonawanda wins this game, there's still no assurance, Frank, that they're going to go on and take a playoff spot because Lackawanna is ahead of them by. Well, over 11 and a half points going into their final game against Medina. And you'll just have to read your newspaper Sunday morning and figure out who the heck made it. Well, one of the things that uh, Bob Holloway, the athletic director here at Tonawanda, indicated was that uh, if his team can take on a Division A or a, a Division I school, uh, an A-rated school in uh, the playoff action, A class, and come up with a win, uh, that gives them a lot of carbon points, a lot more than they would get for a, a B school or B1 or B2 school. So that's the advantage of playing a team like uh, North Tonawanda, if you can beat them, you get a real significant boost in your ratings. Well, you get four points for every win over an A team, and North Tonawanda is an A team. Three for a B team, two for a C, and one for a D. And the team that you beat, every team that they beat on the schedule, you get that same amount of points. Exactly. So they do multiply. However, coming into this game, as far as the Harbin points, Lackawanna had 57. Tonawanda had 45 and a half and Fredonia 47 and a half in the B2 class. They're fighting for the final playoff spot. Maryville, Springville, and Albion have all clinched spots in B2. In Class A, Sweet Home has 108, Orchard Park has 92, Jamestown with 81 and a half, and Lockport with 80, and then North Tonawanda with 66. Now, true, North Tonawanda is a full 14 points behind Lockport and 15 and a half behind Jamestown. But if they beat Tonawanda, one of those two teams lose, they could well go past that team. They probably would with the win tonight and take that fourth and final playoff spot in Class A. But enough about the playoff situations. The loser's out. That's very simple. The winner still has an opportunity in their class. And read the Buffalo Evening News Sunday morning, and you'll find out just exactly who made it. Well, the officials uh, indicating who wants the football first. And we had mentioned the referee for this ball game. That's Don O'Brien. And the umpire is Andy Podolucky. The uh, 
Field judge is Paul Gagliardi, and the linesman is Jim Hutter. There you see the Tonawanda group gathered around. Well, Their North head coach, Glenn Bateman, this is a huge contest for Tonawanda. North Tonawanda is ranked uh, tied for the 10th position in the large school bowl, and Tonawanda is not ranked coming into this game. And it will be a very interesting contest. North Tonawanda has taken the option to receive the ball first, and they are going to send back their two receivers, number 43, and that would be Josh Hacker going back to receive the opening kickoff. And Danny Maines also dropping back deep with him. Their standard return format uh, back there at around the 10-yard line, and the kicker for town wanted to it up. Siniskalski will kick it off. Chris Siniskalski, who kicks off, and then they have a different man doing the extra points, and that would be Ethan Hanna Albia. So Danny Maines, who is a 4-5 sprinter, standing near his own 10-yard line, and he's flanked by Hacker. A very cold evening to start off, even though, Frank, it's a 6 o'clock start. It feels like it's a 7.30 or 8 o'clock start. Yeah, the temperature has dropped pretty uh, pretty rapidly throughout the day, and it's it's chilly out there, but we're ready to go. And Tonawanda's Siniselski kicks it a low line drive that bounces towards the end zone, and it will be fielded at the one-yard line by Danny Maines, the sprinter, and he's caught and dropped deep, deep in his own territory inside the 10-yard line. Great punt coverage there. And it looked to be number 39 in on the coverage, Dave Kuzmierski. Let's check the Tonawanda offense as they come out. And let's watch Danny Maines on this short return. Here you see the replay. He made a huge mistake in that the ball died a little bit. They should have fielded it as soon as it hit the turf at the 10-yard line. Instead, they allowed the ball to roll, thinking it perhaps would get into the end zone. Then he had to make a quick recovery and get anything he could out of it. And it was Dave Kamirsky, first man in on the stop. Man in motion to the left side. And the quarterback going to pass on first down. Wisco throws, and it's incomplete. Hacker, the ball thrown behind the intended receiver, Josh Hacker, out of the backfield near the 20-yard line. Good look at the receiver as Hacker has made some good plays over the, over the year for uh, MT and Dave Anastasi. That time he ran a very nice route, but uh, Wisco underthrew him or threw behind him on his break. Now immediately from the seven yard line on first down to start the game, North Tonawanda goes to their very tough passing attack. It's second down and 10 from the seven. Aaron Wisco, the quarterback with Piper, the fullback behind him. And he's gonna give off to Piper, going to the right side. He busts near the 10 yard line and he's short of the 10 where he's dragged down there by Jaeger, as you see, 66. And also number three in on the stop, Jason Frazier, who is their leading tackler. Well, a good carry there for Piper is he was bottled up a little bit in the backfield. They ran a four wide receiver spread offense with the, just a lone setback behind him. And they had a man in motion trying to pull the defense a little bit, pull everybody away from the center of the field. But Piper took the delayed handoff and uh, just was barely be able to bounce it out over the line of scrimmage, pick up a couple of yards. Well, three receivers out to the right side and Mole comes in motion left. And it's Wisco rolling right, looking, throwing the long ball downfield, and it's caught. Wally Wisniewski to the 45-yard line where he shoved out of bounds. Looks like the official's going to spot him back at about the 42 where he must have first stepped out. But a great recovery and reception there for Wisniewski, who was really covered with like a blanket by the defender. But he went up and got uh, the ball pulled it away from the defensive back. Look at the replay as Wisco just lays the ball out there in a third and eighth play. And you see what he did, he ran over number 85, bumped him a little bit as he got in position to make the reception. That was Chris Siniskalski in on the defense, and they did spot it back to the 41-yard line officially. That will be the line of scrimmage, but Frank Wally Wisniewski on a roll. 32-yard reception and the first down from deep in their own end on a third down play. Six catches last week for Wisniewski, including the game-winning touchdown. Here comes Mole, right side, he's got some running room. He's to midfield, to the 45, 40. 35 and down inside the 35-yard line. And that is Mole, Scott Mole. We expected to see more of him in this game, and he's paid dividends early in this game for the Lumberjacks. Well, a terrific run. Better than 25 yards the way they're going to spot the ball. Everybody probably saying, Frank, excuse me, who's Scott Mole? He's only a sophomore. Very, very strong player, though. 24 yards on the, on the pickup. And as we see him take it to the sideline, and, of course, being bumped out of bounds, but a terrific block out in front of him, lead block that sprung him around the break on the outside. So a great run for the sophomore mole. From the 35, Wisco rolling left. Throws. Wisniewski's got it. And 
it's a completion, and he's down for a first down at the 20. Wally Wisniewski is really on a roll. Boy, six catches all year going into last week's game. Six catches last week, and now two catches here in the first couple of minutes. And take a look at Aaron Wisco. He's on fire so far in this football game. Uh, two completions and three attempts for two first downs, and there's his main man, number 33, Wally Wisniewski, catching this one, as you said, down to the 20, a 15-yard pickup. Well, you look at Aaron Wisco, his stats are pretty good, over 50%, but only five touchdown passes this year. That's a little low for a pitcher of his caliber. Here's a wide-open play, Piper. Headed towards the end zone is near the five yard line and a flag goes down, a late flag. This will be a very important call on this drive. That delayed handoff where Piper reads the offensive blocking and follows the path that he thinks is the shortest and best. Oh, an unfortunate break for North Tonawanda as it appears it's going to come back on a block downfield. He was, as you said, all the way uh, 10 to 15 yards up the field before he was under tackle. And in that kind of situation, he was able to uh, get the first down and set up a first and goal. But with the penalty, it's going to come all the way back. And this is a huge break for Tonawanda as they have, are reeling defensively, Walt, uh, having the opposition pinned down third and eight from the nine-yard line. Well, don't forget now that this team, North Tonawanda, scored 49 points on Tonawanda last year. 49-27 win, and a lot of the players are back again. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul as you see the running play for Piper. Good solid game, but now it's first and ten. Actually, first and 11. From, from the, the 21. 21. Blitz is on. Good play call. Piper drops the ball, and it's called an incomplete pass. That play was set up nicely by Wisco, the quarterback, in the offensive line, and had Piper been able, Frank, to maintain the ball there, they would have had a great chance for a big play. Well, Piper had the opportunity to go a long, long way with three or four blockers out in front of him. In fact, he might have been able to take that to the end zone with the convoy that he had. Unfortunately, he didn't look it all the way in, and... Uh, forces the incompletion. Well, too bad. North Tonawanda getting an ill-advised clip inside the 10-yard line when they didn't need it. Second down play. Let's go to pass. Throws out for Maines, and it's caught by Maines. What a, what a pass that was as Danny Maines hauled it in. A timing pattern, Frank, that was thrown brilliantly. Absolutely. Maines' first catch for 13 yards. More importantly, another first down inside the 10-yard line. And he just stepped back one step and lofted the ball for Maines, who was not really looking at the ball when it was thrown. He turned around, and the ball was right to him. The defensive back could not recover quick enough to make the defensive stop. Well, North Tonawanda takes a timeout. This is sort of a surprise here. With 9.59 to go in the first quarter, they're at the seven-yard line. They have a first and goal, and I'm a little bit surprised, Frank, with the defense reeling like they are that North Tonawanda would use the timeout. Yeah, I am also, unless there was something that Dave Anastasi wanted to really uh, mention or, or focus for his team on the offensive side of the ball, realizing that early in the contest, if they can get up and take the home field crowd out of it, uh, it's certainly to their advantage from the Lumberjack side of things. Well, they have great linebackers, Tonawanda. Jason Frazier leads their team in sacks and tackles. Moscato and Siniskulski are good linebackers. But, you know, when you're sending the wideouts out on nearly every play and throwing downfield, it sort of takes the linebackers out of the game. Yeah, it sure does. They're looking more for run plays, and when you've got to cover so many receivers to the outside, it just spreads the defense out so much that it's very difficult to stop the short uh, dive-type plays or the read plays by the running back uh, taking a handoff deep in the backfield. We have not seen Jeff Snifkowski yet handle the football, and he's one of the main players out of the backfield for North Tonawanda. Well, Glenn Bateman has to have his defensive defense set right now as the offensive coach for NT leaves the field. From the seven-yard line, let's see if they go to Jeff Snifkowski, number 42. He has nine touchdowns on the season. A long count by Wisco, and here comes number 34, Mole, to the end zone. Touchdown, North Tonawanda. And he walked into the end zone. That was a great call. They went on a reverse play, and the sophomore Mole, who earlier had a big run on this drive, takes it in from seven yards for the touchdown. Well, that was the reason for the timeout taken there. They had a gadget play that they wanted to try, and Piper gets the initial handoff, and then Mole takes it around the outside corner, and as you said, he's untouched, taking it into the corner of the end zone. A beautiful call in the first quarter here. Piper will try for the extra point conversion. Jason Riley will put it down. It was going to be a fake. And we have flags on the field. Offside against Tonawanda. Now I'm sure they move it up 
a yard and a half, and from a yard and a half away, we would expect that uh, North Tonawanda will take a chance for two points here, Frank. Yeah, I would think so also. Now, this is not what the doctor ordered for the big home crowd here. Actually, it's a split home crowd because the cities border each other. They're so close. That's a nine-play drive covering 93 yards, taking the ball on the kickoff from their own seven-yard line. And coming up with uh, a good opening touchdown. Didn't take long or much time off the clock either. That's the advantage of the big passing game. 9.53, I believe, here in the first quarter, still on the clock. And because of the advantage of the penalty a yard and a half away, NT will go for the two-point conversion. Wisco the quarterback, Piper the lone back. Wisco a fake, rolls, throws, got a man, it's caught. Two-point conversion, Wally Wisniewski. And Wally Wisniewski with his third catch in two minutes plus here in this first quarter. Well, we played two minutes and seven seconds to be exact. And uh, Wally Wisniewski has just gone crazy here. Three catches. Three catches for 49 yards. You see the replay as you see the touchdown of Scott Mole, Just a sophomore, but amazing acceleration as he was able to beat the defense around the outside corner to the corner of the flag for the uh, first touchdown of the game. Now, Tonawanda, without having the football, is in a little bit of stress uh, situation right now. And they've really got to focus on uh, their offensive attack. Remember, they are a grinded out kind of team. They don't have that passing ability that uh, MT has. No, they do not. They have a great short passer in Dewey, who's completed 60% of his passes this year, seven touchdowns. But they have two breakaway running backs in Bensick, Andy Bensick and Mark Prelowitz. They can score very quickly anytime they get the football. However, this is not the start you wanted when you're at home and trying to keep your playoff hopes alive, obviously. Piper will kick it off. And these two names you'll hear a lot in this game. Prelowitz 34, Bensick 32. They're standing inside their 10-yard line. A bad kick, a low bouncing kick. Siniskowski lets it bounce, and it's picked up there by Frazier, and he's down at the 30-yard line. Call it the 31-yard line. So let's see. Tonawanda will come out, and they run from the twin formation or from the slot. They'll go to the eye. The quarterback will be senior Ken Dewey. The players you might want to watch are halfbacks Andy Bensick, 32, Mark Krulowitz, 34, and also receiver Matt Gross is a good one, number two. Matt Gross has great speed. Well, NT will be focused on the inside of the uh, the offensive line, looking at uh, the, between the tackles, where N or Tanawanda has made uh, great strides this year in picking up yardage, running with Bensick and Prelowitz. Safety man Jeff Sniptowski is the leading tackler for North Tanawanda. First play from scrimmage, a running fumble, play. Fumble. Ball is fumbled, it's loose on the turf, and the Lumberjacks have recovered the loose football. As Andy Bensick either did not get a handle on it, or somebody forced the ball free. Oh, and disaster. there's a dejected halfback, Andy Benson, going off. Disaster situation here. He never really got the handoff from the quarterback, I thought, on the play. As Dewey couldn't put it into the midsection before the Bensick was hit, and it fell away immediately, and we could see the ball rolling, and NT had the best chance to pick it up, and three of their players surrounded the ball and made the recovery. What a great break and opportunity early in this game for NT. And this is scary. Tonawanda's defense has played well all year, but you give NT the ball in this position from the 33 at Wisco. Back to pass. Fires, man open, caught. First down, or close to the first down, is Danny Maines. He's right near the sticks. And they are really doing a heck of a job here throwing the football. Boy, Wisco is on fire, as you said. Four completions in six attempts, now five completions in seven. And that's enough for the first down. Maines gets his second reception. He had give him 11 yards on the play. He had an opportunity to look at the ball coming free there from halfback Andy Bensick and the recovery by the Lumberjacks. It was enough for the first down as Frank Bencher to the 22-yard line. Moe goes in motion right. And Piper, the fullback, is hit and drop near the line of scrimmage. Number 70 left tackle John Burles. He is a junior in on the stop. Great tackle there as Piper again had a good wall of blockers out in front of him. The hole looked like it was uh, opening up very nicely for him and coming in from the backside there and just getting a hand around the ankle and dropping the running back in his tracks, uh, preventing any kind of a pickup. In fact, they'll mark it for no gains. Well, you have to run the ball once in a while. It's like the Buffalo Bills. When they're effective, they run Thurman Thomas. Well, North Tonawanda, they like to pass it, but they have to run it too to be effective. And here's another reverse. Here comes Maines. He's got great speed, and Maines is cut down on a beautiful tackle. 
In on the stop for Tonawanda, Ron Jenkins is number 20. And a loss of three yards there for Maine. Or a loss of two yards, rather. As the ball is going to be spotted back to the 25-yard line. You know, Jenkins inserted in the game early at one of the cornerback spots. Third down and 13. See the replay there as the cornerback uh, beat the defender or beat the offensive blockers and was able again just to get a hand around the ankle enough to upset the balance of the running back now forcing them into a third and long situation. This is critical stop uh, situation for Tonawanda in the football game. What Tonawanda has done is brought Jenkins in and take, taken out one of their down linemen to play an extra defensive back like a nickel package. Blitz is on. Wisco's pass is thrown away. It was intended for Piper. Boy, they had that smell, though. <laughs> no now chance. The, the line of scrimmage being the 25, should they try a field goal, it'd be nearly 42 yards. Well, we saw their kicker taking some warm-up uh, kicks, and he has a tremendous leg. I'm not sure if he's going to try to go the distance here, but uh, tremendous leg power in their kicker. And we saw that demonstrated in the Lockport contest when he boomed a field goal. Piper, he's also their fullback and he's out on the field now but it doesn't look like they're going to go for a field goal they're going to go for it on fourth down and 12 from the 25 yard line this is a big play in the ball game early in the contest Tonawanda already down eight nothing early Danny Maines in motion right money man Wally with Snooski in on the right side also Wisco to throw for Maines and a bad pass uh, you may have thrown it away under a little bit of pressure in the backfield. And a wise choice, I thought, for Wisco. He put it in a spot where no one was going to be able to get to it, and he didn't risk an interception uh, in that situation. So nothing lost, uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained in a game like this. you got to pull out some stops once in a while, and Tanawanda comes up with a big defensive stand. Credit Mike Baker, the corner with very fine coverage. And Wisco, as Frank said, might have thrown that one away. It was not anywhere near the intended receiver, Maines. Well, we've had one turnover in the game, the fumble on their first handoff. Let's see what they're able to do with their second play from scrimmage. Tanawan only one play from scrimmage, and that a fumble. And they lost possession. They're taking over at their own 25. 7.23 to go in the first quarter. 8-0 NT. And that was a late pitch. And here comes Krellowitz. He's got some room to ramble, and he picks up some good yardage across the 30 near the 32. Krellowitz with a seven-yard pickup on the play. That's the type of team they are, Prelowitz and Bensick, slicing type runners. Well, they don't need a lot of room either. They're not the biggest guys in the world, and they're able to get through some small holes. And that time, actually, he leaped over a tackler and a blocker who had fallen in front of him to get the, the needed yardage here, picking up seven yards on the first down carry. Well, just so you're informed at home, your right end on defense for North Tonawanda is DeRosa. Kevin DeRosa is a 250-pound player. Your left end is Mark Burke. He is a 240-pound player. Your tackles inside go 175, Davigan, and Benson is 215 pounds. They are huge up front. Their linebackers are all good size also. So they have a decided weight advantage. As you look at the Tonawanda line, they're all in the 190 range on their offensive line. And here's a pitch to Vensick. And Vensick breaks tackle. First down yardage to the 46. A slow developing play, but Andy Vensick able to slip the tackle to the back. Pick up the first down yardage. 15-yard pickup there for Andy Vensick, their first first down, and that's exactly what they like to do. Run them inside, run them outside. Switch up with the two running backs. They ran left with a sweep left, and they ran right this time with a sweep right. That's uh, where they like to go. Is, but, uh, if they can control the football, they'll keep it in between the tackles. You see that he picked up an extra 10 yards with that broken tackle, five yards past the line of scrimmage. Jason Meisenberg in on the stop, number 38, but well downfield. They spot the ball at the 47-yard line. First down play for Dewey. A long count and a straight handoff, and not too much there for Prelowitz. He might have ground out a couple of yards on the play near the 49. Frank, you look at the offensive line for Tonawanda, and uh, just looking at it very quickly, their biggest player on their offensive line, weight-wise, is Greg Case at 193 pounds. Well, that's not very big against that big defense for NT. They have to have uh, good execution of their blocking patterns and uh, try and get the angles as best they can to open up the holes. They are a very, at a very decided weight disadvantage. Second down and eight play coming up. Dewey has not attempted a pass yet in this contest. He's from the 49. And they're going to keep it on the ground. An option pass. Trello, it's hit as he throws. Oh it's up for grabs. And it's intercepted. Picked off. 
and coming back down the sidelines, the NT player, huge yardage for Mark Fisher. Mark Fisher with a great interception and a bad decision there for Mark Prelowitz going for the pass. It was a pretty well-designed play, but there was pressure on Prelowitz in the backfield as he released the football. And their first pass attempt results in another turnover here in this first quarter. You just can't keep giving a high-scoring team like North Tonawanda these kind of opportunities. For the third time now, for the second time, excuse me, in a row, they will be starting in Tonawanda territory for this drive. I couldn't pick up the number of the on-rushing player who made that happen because it was more the hit on Krelowitz as he released the ball, he was hit, and that enabled the ball to flutter, and Fisher made the interception. From the 45 of Tonawanda, here comes Wisco. Long pass downfield, and it's incomplete over the outstretched arms of Wally Wisniewski. A little bit of a streak here as he had completed three passes in a row and now failed three times in a row in the passing side of things. And then Wisco with that good size, as Walt mentioned, uh, has the ability at 6'3 to read the field or see the field much better than smaller quarterbacks, height-wise, that is, and he uses it to his advantage. The other thing that Dave Anastasi likes to do is he likes to roll his quarterback out and get him away from the pressure, and their linemen are well-versed in that blocking scheme, and that gives him a little bit more time to allow the receivers to get 5-0-1 to go in the first quarter. North Tonawanda leading 8-0, second and 10 from the 45. And a handoff. Piper, the fullback, wrapped up and dropped by 78, Bill McClure, the right tackle. He's a 200-pound senior. Nice job there getting, again, wrapped up around the knees and just a short two yards picked up there for Piper. Piper's been held in check somewhat here in this football game. He has uh, three carries for six yards. But his, his key role on the team is to get the tough yards when they need them, uh, inside the tackles and in short yarded situations. And also, he is a very, very effective kicker. He has a strong, powerful leg. Bill McClure, six foot three, 200 pound senior. Bill is the biggest guy weight wise on defense. 200 pounds. Actually, Chris Moscato, the linebacker, is 201, which is pretty close. Their biggest, their biggest player goes 200. Their big boys average 190, 195, let's say, range, Frank. And when you go to NT, you turn it up. Turn it up to the 240s for some players, up to 250 for a player. Well, that's a significant amount of weight difference on the forward line. And that, that won't show up so much in the early part of the game when the players play with a lot of adrenaline and emotion going their way. But as the game progresses, the big guys will wear you out. They just body up too much on you. Well, well Wisco, North Tonawanda wants a timeout. Wisco, the quarterback, we really didn't talk about it that much, but he's almost a linebacker size himself. He's 6'3 and 190. He's a big quarterback. He sure is. As we talked, that gives him uh, the opportunity to see the field very well from the quarterback position. And NT here, for some reason, unsure of what they were going to do on third and eight, decides to use their second timeout of this first half. Uh, first half timeouts, you know, you, you don't really think that much about how, the, how important they are. Second half timeouts, obviously, are more critical. But a little bit of a surprise here is both teams have had a week to get prepared for this, and both teams have known since last week uh, how much this game was going to meet as far as playoff situation or opportunities go. Well, an unbelievable uh, development last week with... Lockport losing to North Tonawanda on that last minute drive by North Tonawanda. What it, it did, in fact, was throw the uh, Class A playoff situation into a real dogfight because tomorrow on Saturday, Lockport hosts Jamestown. You know, now the loser of that game conceivably will be knocked out of the playoffs if North Tonawanda wins this game. Now, North Tonawanda goes from a team that was looking like they'd be out of the playoffs to a team that might make it to the playoffs. And talking to Wally Wisniewski after the game in our interview, our player of the week last game, Frank, he thought that they're gelling and that they can go all the way if they get in the playoffs. Well, they certainly seem to have the talent from what we could see last week against Lockport. They weren't as sure of themselves as they appear to be in this contest here. Uh, going 93 yards with the opening kickoff, uh, that's, that's just tremendous. Uh, for a drive, and it took them nine plays to do it, so they were very steady, and they picked up key third down plays. They, they look like they have the talent. Third and seven from the 42, as you see on the monitor. Flags are down. The pass is incomplete out of the hands of Danny Maines. Just a shade too far for Danny Maines. I think this was going to be on the offense anyways, and it would have been. Yes, it would have been. I think that uh, on the fourth down play now, they will elect... Tonawanda will to take the play as an incompletion and decline the penalty. Well, let's not be uh, too hasty on that because many times we've been wrong. High school decisions are a little bit different. Uh, not this time. Not when you have Wisco there. Brings up a you know, no way they want to give Wisco a chance to throw the football. Fourth down play, they decline the penalty. So they take the play. Wisco now 0-4 in his last four attempts. And 
Officially in the game, he is uh, 5 of 11. Yeah, you just can't give a, a good passer like Wisco an opportunity on third down to what? convert. Make him punt it right now. Pfeiffer standing back at his 45. Gross in single safety. Pretty good punt here. Well, not really. It goes off the side of his foot. Let's see where the official marks it. They bring it upfield near the 22-yard line. And I thought for a moment, Frank, that he might have caught it inside and it would bounce inside the 20. Seemed to pull it a little bit with his foot, and he never really got a good chance to get his leg uh, driven through the ball. In fact, it must have been off the side of his foot because it came ricocheting very quickly to the near sideline like he hooked the ball. Now let's talk about that option play, too. Now, this was the bread and butter play for Tonawana that produced four touchdowns in their first four or five games. But uh, now maybe other teams know that it's coming. Well, like, like many coaches do, when something's working so effectively for you, you have a tendency to stay with it as long as you possibly can. And that, that, that drives some of the fans crazy sometimes. Well, we're talking about Prelowitz throwing. He threw four touchdowns in his first four games with that play. And here's the running play. And Prelowitz grinds out a couple of yards near the 25-yard line, and that's all. We stopped by a host of tacklers for NT. Well, NT's big guy is getting in on the tackler, number 39 especially, doing a pretty good job. Dan Orem, a sophomore, 5'9", 170-pounder, getting in there to deliver the, uh, the hit and hold Prelowitz to just a couple of yards. One change on defense for this game, Larry Davigan being rewarded the starting right tackle starting spot on defense for the Lumberjacks, a 5'10", 175-pound senior playing well. So number 59 in there in the starting lineup. Second down and seven, a gain of three. Gross and Siniskulski now flip-flop. They're right out to the right side. Dewey will hand it off again. Nothing fancy. It's Bensick. Bensick stopped after a short gain. A couple more yards, and that's all. He's thrown back. Well, he's going to get the decent yardage way. They're going to mark the football. Linesman said he got three, maybe four yards out to the 28, almost the 29-yard line. So we'll give him four yards there for Bensick. He's a tough runner. We saw him earlier this season when we covered Tonawanda. Uh, really play very, very tough. I think it was against the Amherst team, was it not, Walt? That right. he had a very good running game. He's got good size. Bensick, 5'10", 180-pound senior. Fellow, it's uh, pretty much the same size, also at... 5'10 and 180 pounds. They pretty much mirror image themselves as running backs, and they're both very talented. Third down and a long three. Dewey's going to pass this time. Rolling right on the bootleg. Looking to pass. He's going to rush it upfield, and he's driven out of bounds. Let's see if he got enough for the first down. Yeah, I he think sure he did. did. Sure did. They're going to give him all the way up to the 35-yard line. So six-yard pickup there for Dewey, and it couldn't come at a better time. They need to get something going and established on the offensive side of the football. Well, what he did, he baited the defense into thinking that he might throw the football, and that bought him some time. And they sent the deep uh, receiver, number two, out of the sideline. As you look at the replay, Dewey turning it up the corner and picking up the necessary first yard, uh, first down yardage. Matt Gross was taking the ball deep, and the defender had to respect that and stayed with him before he decided to come up and try and make a play on Dewey. It seems like this is a long first quarter here. Two minutes and 31 seconds remain in the first quarter. If you just joined us, North Tonawanda took the opening kickoff, drove it for a touchdown, and also got a two-point conversion. They lead it 8-0. Running play, and Andy Bensick is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Or that's uh, Prelowitz, excuse me, the ball carrier. Very short yardage. Prelowitz, and I mentioned, Frank, they are they almost look alike. You look at the back of the uniform or the number, and that's the only way you'd be able to tell 34 and 32 apart. He's held to a one-yard pickup there. 12 yards and four carries for Prelowitz. He was hit on the play by number 48, Chris Perna and Al Regdos. Those are two tough customers back there defensively. And both are seniors, by the way, Bensick and Prelowitz. Here they are, side by side. You could probably take the shirt off one or the other and put it on the other one. You really couldn't tell too much of a difference. A second down play, a nine coming up, ball at the 36-yard line. Dewey going to pass. Rushes on. Dewey throws. It's caught by Prelowitz. And Prelowitz makes a nice dive forward for an additional yard or so. Well, Dewey finally gets a chance to really throw the ball when it counts. The play will stand. His first pass, his first completion. And Prelowitz makes a nice reception, as you said, as he gets, uh, let's see, seven yards on the play, setting up the third and short. See the replay once again. He's hit pretty well right there after making the reception. And again, number 48, close to the play, Chris Perna, to bring him down. Uh, late in this first quarter, they need to keep this drive alive and third down play like this just near your own side of the midfield stripe. It's one of those tough plays to call. Third down and two. 
The ball at the 30, or the ball now resting at the 43 yard line. Dewey on a long count. He'll hand it straight up the middle, and they've got him. And he might be stopped short of the first down yarder. It's Prelowitz, Prelowitz again, Mark Prelowitz. He'll get a yard, and that's it. Again, the inside interior line uh, defensively for NT. Very big, very tough. They close the gaps very quickly with the quick linebackers that they have. And a fourth and a short yard needed here for the first down. Wise decision with the one touchdown uh, difference between the teams is to give up the football and put it away. There you see the handoff, and there just wasn't much there. Number 48 quickly on the ball for well, the stop. Well, they have elected to punt this football away. Sinoskowski apparently is going to punt it away. He will. The rush is on a beautiful high kick. And let's see what the official will mark it. It didn't have great distance on it, but it was very effective. No return on it. All the way back to the 30-yard line, so not too bad from their 44. Looks like about a 26-yard punt. Well, 26 yards they picked up on the punt, not great yardage. But for the change, NT's back on their own end of the field to start an offensive drive. I think NT would be very happy with that decision that they uh, elected to punt. I mean, it's a tough call to go for it from near midfield so early in this game. They don't want to give up field position too many times. Again, the passing offense can beat you very quickly. Nine seconds remaining in the first quarter, first and 10 from the 30-yard line, and motion is Mole left. This goal will hand off, and here comes uh, Mole on the reverse, and again, it breaks free. Mole down the sideline, midfield, across midfield for the first down. Let's see where they finally spot him. 21-yard pickup for Scott Mole. Boy, he's having a great day running that play. It's just a simple reverse with the fullback Piper getting the initial handoff and then turning it right back to Mole, who's lined up as a wingback to the left side. Now twice they've taken it around the right side of the field and more than enough yards for the first down. And there you see him as he's really able to turn it on before being forced out of bounds. Wisco also with a good block out in front of him. Scott Moles had a great first quarter, last play of this first quarter, and here comes Mole again. Left side cut down after a short gain. A beautiful tackle there for number 44, Mike Baker. And we've come to the end of the first quarter from Clinton H. Small Stadium in Tonawanda, New York. The North Tonawanda Lumberjacks lead the Tonawanda Warriors 8 to nothing. They were young. They were willing to risk their lives for a vision. From their passionate fight came one of the most radical doctrines of all time, the Constitution. A doctrine that places the power in the individual, enabling each of us to dream, to inspire, to achieve. Our system is most vital when each of us participates in it. When we vote, we keep this passion alive. Nothing North Tonawanda leading as we prepare to start the second quarter of action here from Clinton 8 Small Stadium. The home crowd in attendance here, overflow capacity crowd, fans standing and lining both goal lines. Behind the goal line area is a crowd in excess of 7,000, up to 10,000 for this game. Wisco on the pass and it's incomplete as he rolled right. Great pressure there by Prelowitz, along with Johnny Burroughs, the left tackle. Yeah, that's exactly what they needed to put a little bit more pressure on Wisco and not allow him the time to throw the football. And that kind of pressure has resulted in him missing on his last five attempts, Walt. And that's quite a change from the great start that he had. That start that he had at the beginning of the football game on their opening drive led to their getting their first points of the game. Those points have held up through the first quarter. An 8 nothing lead so far for NT. Third and seven, a big play in the ball game at the outset of the second quarter. You look around the field line with spectators. No seats are empty. Standing room only all the way around. It's incredible the amount of people here now. Wisco's pass caught. That's a first down. Let's see who has the reception. We'll pick up the number for you at home. It's number 49, I believe, and that would be, no, that would be Piper. No, I'm sorry, that is Josh Hacker, the halfback, number 43 on the reception, excuse me. Josh Hacker, a senior at 5'10", 175, and look at the overflow crowd here. Right That's just the seating there. But when you go into the end zones, they're lined up all the way down Let's take a look at the replay. Well, that's the actual play itself. Well, that's Piper. It I'm sorry. Piper takes it upfield, 
and has a nice gain as they quickly got off the play. Remember, they run at no huddle offense. They don't take much time to get off the play. He picks up pretty good yardage, too. Looks like they're going to give him a full seven yards there. So Piper with his best carry of the first half, and this is a good drive. And that previous play was a 12-yard pickup, enough for the first down on the third down play. And now with this continued uh, forward progress that they're making, they're pushing it again deep into Tonawanda's end of the field. The Tonawanda defense has got to be tired. Well, they're worried as you see them on the sideline there, the Warriors sideline. Second and three from the 27. Tonawanda running the play and diving forward for yardage is Scott and Wall near the sticks. You mentioned that you have to be alert because if you're watching at home, don't get up for a beverage when North Tonawanda has the ball. Watch how quickly they get to the line of scrimmage. And they're right there again, and uh, Tonawanda makes a defensive change. Third and a yard. Third down and one. And it's tough for Tonawanda to get their change in. In time, the quarterback, Wisco, keeps it for the first down yardage. And when we were looking up and down the stands and all the people, yeah, that's when they snuck in a play real quickly, and they do not take much time. Well, let's see. They're going to give him five yards, enough for the first down. Again, Wisco uh, handling the football there. He does a very good job with it as the quarterback. He's so big, it's tough to stop him running behind the big offensive line that he has. Third and a yard is very, very easy for them to pick up against the smaller Tonawanda defense. This is not the way Tonawanda had hoped to start the football game or continue on here in this first half. Well, the ball will be spotted near the 21-yard line. The senior quarterback, 6'3", 190-pounder Aaron Wisco on a long count. Straight handoff, and Piper, the fullback, Good yardage before he's chopped down by Mark Bellowitz. Bellowitz has been in on the last three or four stops alone. He's all over the field trying to help his club here. Frank and and they need something. They need a turnover more than anything. In our earlier days of doing games on, it was then International Cable. Ken East and Ken West used to draw the big crowds. We've had some pretty good crowds here at North Tonawanda, Tonawanda, but I don't think I've ever seen a crowd like this with standing room all the way around for a football game in very chilly conditions. Well, it's like a thrill of a lifetime for the players to play in front of a crowd like this. There's and Piper. here comes Piper, heading for the end zone. Did he get in? No signal. Touchdown. Yes, the there it is. The official on the far side signals a touchdown, and he's going to race in there now. One said yes, one said no. Yes, one said yes. That's enough. A touchdown from 17 yards out for Piper, Kevin Piper. Well, two people that you didn't really expect to do the damage here. Scott Mole and Kevin Piper have scored touchdowns for Boy, North Tonawanda. And I'll tell you, Piper just, uh, he had a dream run there as he was really not touched once he got past the line of scrimmage. Well, the official nearest the play was going to signal he was down shy of the touchdown, but the official further from the play apparently had a better angle, and he signaled no, he was in. They go for two. Snap back to Piper. Throw out here, and let's see if it's caught. No, it's incomplete. The ball was batted down. The ball hung in the air a little bit, and it allowed Jenkins to cover up some ground. Well, that helps. That helps the town of cause. Look at the replay of Piper's run. He just about barely made it. And one official said his knee hit the turf. The official on the far side of the field, and you see a helmet being thrown in frustration by the town of defense. Jim Hutter said he didn't make it. Paul Gagliardi said he did. They both conferred. One said yes, that's enough. And the touchdown stands on the 17-yard run, and that caps a 70-yard scoring drive. So when they get good field position, they can't score. When they have poorer field position, they can take it a long way. Hey, you see that shot there, that long shot of the scoreboard? There? That's all people standing all the way down the sidelines. There's a good look at the Tonawanda sideline. They know they can come back in this game. It's not going to be easy, but they know they've got the capabilities and the team that could come back in this kind of deficit. There's a look at the far sidelines. That's the North Tonawanda sidelines. Now, that's uh, people sitting in that area. But they're all standing behind each end zone line and all the way down the side right next to us the Tonawanda side where there are a lot of people here tonight I think, wow. I think they're probably in excess of 10,000 here's the kickoff Piper a roller and it's picked up there by Frazier the middle linebacker who returns kickoffs when they kick him short and he's up over the 40 and the official's going to mark him further back upfield apparently as he must have stepped out of bounds inside the 40 yard line let's see where they finally spot it Jason Frazier, he leads the team in tackles and sacks and getting an opportunity to handle the football on short kickoffs. There you see him coming off the field. He was uh, a little bit frustrated on the defensive side of the ball just a moment ago. They need a touchdown. They need something aggressive here. They've only picked up two first downs so far in the game. Uh, North Tonawanda has nine. Well, I think they caught a break that North Tonawanda elected to go for two in that situation rather than the single point. Ken Dewey, the quarterback. Pitch 
to Krelowitz. Krelowitz hit in the backfield, breaks free. Krelowitz to midfield, and he crosses midfield for a first down. Wow, is he a tough runner? Matt Krelowitz, he'll give you everything he's got every play. On the offensive and defensive side, that time on the offensive side, after making a lot of tackles on the previous drive, he, uh, he just turned, boy. He's got uh, some strong, strong legs. See Krelowitz taking the handoff and breaking that tackle right there. Now watch him drive through that potential tackle, getting five more yards out of it. Turned a short play into a big play. Mark Fisher made the stop, but not until Krelowitz had the first down yardage. Ball spotted just over midfield at the 49-yard line of North Tonawanda. So Tonawanda is into North Tonawanda territory. Dewey's going to throw it short. It's caught by Bensick. He's immediately wrapped up and thrown down by Fisher again. And on a stop, no, that's not Fisher. It's Dan Olrum, number 39. Olrum, just 29. a sophomore. He's playing a very fine game, number 39 defensively. Bensick with the reception. That's his first catch. So they've gone to Prelowitz and Bensick. And just about the same play, little swing passes, and allowing those two great runners to try and take it upfield. Well, the problem that Tanawanda's having is the size differential, Frank, and they're getting beat up on the line of scrimmage. Not much room for the running backs to uh, get going. And when the running backs are making good runs, they're pretty much doing it on their own. Not because of a blocking situation. The North Tonawanda defense has really picked it up a notch here in this first half, and they've played outstanding. Dewey, somewhere along the line, he's going to have to get hot throwing the football. They run it to Bensick, and Bensick near the sticks, close to the first down yard. That's Prelowitz again. Well, it's a little slow getting up that time as he got uh, seven yards back there. What does it look like now? Prelowitz uh, carrying the football as opposed to Bensick. It seems like they're going exclusively to Prelowitz. Seven carries, 33 yards for Mark Prelowitz, and 21 yards on three carries for Andy Bensick. Bensick 32, Prelowitz 34. That was Mark Prelowitz on that last carry, just shy of the first down yard. Two down situation coming up here. Third and a half a yard available to them. They need to get some points, so they will go for it even if they miss here on fourth, unless there's a big loss. The ball is at the 41-yard line. And here's a pitch, and here comes Prelowitz. Picks up the first down, breaks the tackle, and is taken down near the 35-yard line. And again, it's left inside linebacker, sophomore Dan Ola. Orum, another tackle, so he's had a good first half. A couple of young players on the NT side of the ball playing very well. Mole on the offense, as you see Prelowitz being tackled by Orum, and Orum on the defense there, number 39. Just sophomore players on the high school varsity team. Yeah, it's impressive to see sophomores starting. You bet. And really contributing. One on offense, one on defense. Mole certainly has been the catalyst so far on offense. One of the key players for North Tonawanda. And Orem on defense, uh, more than holding his own for North Tonawanda, but now Tonawanda mounts their first scoring drive, their first scoring threat. Dewey in trouble, nice dangerous pass. pass. Bensick's got it in the flat, and Bensick picks up nearly five yards to the 30-yard line. Well, it's one of those plays where you're darned if you do, and you're darned if you don't, if you're the defensive guy, because he's closing quickly, thinking that uh, Bensick's going to lay a block on him, and he's going to have to tackle Dewey. So Bensick skips the block, swings it to the outside, and Dewey just lays a pass out there for Bensick to run to and take the ball further upfield. A beautiful job, I thought, at least completing the pass and getting some positive yardage out of it. By the way, Dewey is three for three now. He's a short type passer, and he's was up near the 70% completion mark. He's down near 60 now, but that's still a pretty good completion record for the year. 60%. Those are very safe passes, though. He's not throwing the ball much upfield. Almost like a lateral pass, that pass. Here's a quick flip to Bensick. He fumbles the football, and it's Orem, the sophomore, with the big recovery. Third turnover on Tonawanda. Well, there's two ways to win a game, and there's one way to lose a game. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. That's their third. Offensively, you win the games by holding on to the ball and using up the clock, getting a lead. And you wonder who are the happiest people right now besides North Tonawanda doing this game. It's got to be head coach Bill Pucallo and his young Lackawanna Steelers because they would benefit and they would be in the playoffs if Tonawanda loses this football game. You get very few shots to make the playoffs. you got to make the most of it. Tonawanda just uh, spoiled a tremendous opportunity. Here's a running play. Big hole. Here comes Mull to the 45-yard line where he's finally dragged down by Prelowitz and Gross. 17 yards, and Scott Mole is unstoppable here in this first quarter. 75 yards now on six carries. And just about every time he touches the ball, he's getting a first down. 
Look at the replay there. Boy, some tremendous speed out of the backfield and then good moves. Very deceptive type runner. Well, Scott Mole, 5'8", 185, a sophomore. We didn't feature him too much. Talking about him coming into this game because they didn't use him that much. Bringing him along slowly. And now he's going to be a key factor if they do indeed make the playoffs. He's a key factor in this game. Here comes Piper. They've got that play smelled out. He's drilled right near our camera, man. Watch out there, Ned. Well, that's Mark Tucci on the camera, along with Ned Niedermeyer. Piper stopped at the line of scrimmage. See the replay is trying to turn the corner to the right side. Just ran out of running room to the sideline. The sideline came up quicker as he was. Uh, the ball was spotted at the right hash mark. He's running to the right. That's a lot less room to try and swing it wide. There's Mark Tucci on the camera along with Ned Niedemeyer. They've been flip-flopping there on that camera location, giving you all those tight shots. Wisco to pass. Dangerous pass. Caught. Hackers. He went up for it. Hacker pulled it down near the 30 for a first down. Josh Hacker. Very effective player out of the back. Well, I'll tell you, the quarterback, Wisco, is having a tremendous first half now. Seven of 14 passes completed. I'll have to really take some time. He's over 100 yards in uh, yardage, I believe, or very close to it. And he has set up the running plays very, very nicely by hitting the key passes. Get off the ball! 4.45 to go in the first half, 14-0 North Tonawanda. Here's a handoff to Piper. Piper inside the 30, near the 27-yard line. Gain of nearly three yards on the play. And Piper appears to uh, have a little injury favoring his stomach. He might have got punched there on the day. Might have taken the helmet. And the abdomen there is. He tried to drive his way through. Somebody might might have gotten down a little bit lower than he did and came up on him. And Tonawanda cannot afford another score here by North Tonawanda. No, absolutely not. Out. They need a turnover. Second down and seven. Go now. Very impressive North Tonawanda team. Wisco's pass caught. Wide open. Danny Maines turns it upfield. Inside the 10. Touchdown. What a run. After the catch by Danny Maines. A 27-yard touchdown reception. He turned the corner at the 10, and it was lights out with that 4-5 speed. Danny Maines. Boy, this is becoming too easy here. With the clock down to 3.58 to go here in the second quarter. Their third touchdown. And a beautiful pass from Wisco and a, a, you know, a tremendous route run there by Danny Man Maines, who has that tremendous speed, a 4-5 of 40. And he used it to his advantage once he made the reception. Well, it was a great block at the 10-yard line. I think it might have been Piper. I'm not certain, but a tremendous cutback block. You saw late on the replay. North Tonawanda will go for a single point now with a very comfortable 20 to nothing lead. Piper will try the extra point. Here's the kick. The kick is up, and the kick is good. It's out near the buses over the fence and out of the ballpark. And we did not expect this, and I don't think anybody in the sellout crowd expected this type of game. You see the replay. Look at this great reception. As he's so far open, he's at least six yards away from the cornerback, and then he gets a good block as he takes it around the outside and runs it into the end zone. Beautiful job done there. Their third touchdown of this first half. And, Walt, i got to tell you, this there's just almost an impossible situation ahead of Tonawanda, even though we're still in the first half. They do not have that quick-strike offense ability. And they needed to control the clock, as we said, in our keys to the game, run the ball very well, and stop Wisco's passing attack. They just have not been able to stop Wisco. They stopped him for a short time when he missed five in a row, but in, sandwiched in between there, he hit the six passes. Well, not too many people have been able to stop quarterback Aaron Wisco in the 1992 season when North Tonawanda has been beaten. They've been beaten or snake bitten, losing games that they could have won. And there's still an outside uh, possibility that they could win the Division I title, but you'll have to pick up your paper, Buffalo Evening News on Sunday, and see what developed. But with this win, I think they're going to make the playoffs. If this, if they win this game, it's a long, long way from over. Kickoff, Frazier, third time he's handled the kickoff, and Frazier is hit and knocked down near the 34-yard line by Randy Chanowski on the special team. Well, Dewey brings his offense out with Bensick and Frelowitz in his backfield, and they may just try to throw the ball just a little bit more here and see if they can get anything out of it. There's some time on the clock, but uh, 350 and counting, uh, clock moves very rapidly when you run a running attack on the high school level. 
21 nothing North Tonawanda in command here. One thing that would favor Tonawanda if they should mount a comeback is that uh, North Tonawanda is primarily a passing team, so they're not used to milking the clock a lot. Dewey's going to pass. They pretty much have to now, down 21 nothing. His toss is caught. Uh, Fumble. Kane, ball is fumbled, loose on the turf. Who has Wait it? for the official's call, and it's Tonawanda recovering. Oh, that's a break. But way back upfield again. They lost a lot of that yard in back. Andy Benson comes up with a loose football. Yeah, fortunately for them. As the receiver made a nice reception, Matt Gross over the middle, and then he gave up a little yardage looking to get over the first down marker and try and turn something uh, short into a big play. And that effort uh, forced the for and as they haste to get upfield, he's lost control of the football. And fortunately for him, ben Bensick came up with it. There you see it pop free before he came down. And look at Bensick battle in there, pounding shoulder pad to shoulder pad to prevent the uh, ball from being turned over again. Well, Fisher and Wisco went on the tackle, caused the fumble, and Fisher had a great chance to recover that football. Second down and seven. Dewey to pass, rushes on, Ora missed the tackle. Dewey now breaks away. Good looking run here by Boy, Dewey. He, it looked like he hurt his leg too as that, he sidestepped the tackler. Let's see how he gets up. Not a lot of yardage, but Dewey could have been stopped for a four or five yard loss. He picked up a couple of yards. Dewey uh, saying something, I think, to Seneskowski, his wide receiver. Third down and four. The replay of it as he breaks the tackle, and then he breaks another one right there by eluding the plane. It looked like he twisted his ankle a little bit there, I thought, but he's walking okay now, and in fact, has called a timeout. Good look at senior quarterback Ken Dewey. 60% completion ratio. He actually has had a good first half here. It's just that their running game going up against the huge defensive line for North Tonawanda hasn't been able to get perking. And really, you know, the turnovers have killed them. You just can't turn the ball over at the rate they've done it. They've pretty near turned the ball over every time they've had it, except for the one punting situation. They have, what, three turnovers in this first half. A fumble, an interception, and another fumble. And they almost had four just a second ago. And the other time they turned it over on a fourth down punt when they had fourth down in less than a yard. Elected to kick from near midfield. Well, the score was different at the time. It was an eight-nothing game. Can't argue with that kind of decision. But now when you're down by three touchdowns, you've got to really change your offensive strategy. And it's a question whether Tonawanda is able to turn into a high-powered type offense, a quick strike type offense from what they've been doing all year long in building their 5-2 record. Well, two teams have clinched in the big classification. Class A, Orchard Park has clinched a spot, and Sweet Home has clinched a spot. The other two spots are up for grabs. And North Tonawanda trying to bid to be that third or fourth team. And if they win this game, and they're doing great right now, as Dave Anastasi's at me, their head coach, they'd be in position to uh, be one of the teams because Lockport and Jamestown play each other this weekend, and that loser would probably be knocked out. Pass here is caught and then drilled is the receiver on the play. Yep, Prelowitz, I think, makes the reception. No, number 44 makes the catch. What a tremendous hit, and he's short of the first down, just a three-yard pickup when they needed five. That's Mike Baker. Baker, who uh, is a substitute running back. Baker's a junior. Big booming hit on him there. I'll tell you, Dewey's five for five as you look at the replay. Now watch the player coming up and make the hit on him, and that is Wisco. Yeah, they're going to punt. Look, look for a fake here in this situation with 2.07 to go in the half. No, Siniskelski will punt it. Nice end over end kick. It's taken there and immediately under tackle. That's Hacker that takes the ball. <laughs> Boy, Hacker, may, I think he made a poor choice here feeling that. Well, when the football. ball's so high up, you know, you've got to make a decision that you want to get under and at least stop it from rolling upfield, which he did well, but he forgot to put his arm up to signal a fair catch because when you're that concentrated on the football, you're wide open for a solid hit from the uh, tackler coming downfield, and you see it. He was fortunate not to really get pasted there. All right, you make the call at home. You be the armchair quarterback or coach. Now you're up 21 nothing. The game's in your favor, but you've got a great passing. Are you going to sit on your lead with 150 to go on the half, or are you going to try for more? Why, why risk anything right now? You're full command, full control. Get the boys in the locker room, get them settled down, and get them ready for the next 24 minutes in the second half. Well, the Buffalo Bills in this situation, doing the same thing, might turn it up a notch. And there's a running play, and they do keep it on the ground. A safe play, and Viper is caught for a yard loss. Yeah, I think that's great strategy myself. Well, let's see if they do it on second down. They are up to the line of scrimmage without wasting any time, so I don't think they're trying to run the clock out. 1.20 to go, and they use their no huddle. They're up at the line very quickly. 
This is interesting. Now, why come to the line so quickly if you're going to run a running play? You know, so much for what I said. Wisco back to pass. Long ball. Wisniewski, has got it. To the 40. To the 39. And they'll look to call timeout with 106 on the clock. And we take a quick poll at home. And 95% of our viewing audience was wrong. 31-yard <laughs> reception for Wisniewski. Boy, is he having a half. A half and a half, 80 yards on four catches, another first down for MT. You know, it's like going for the jugular here. They're almost unstoppable, and I would have said no, but why stop now? If you see the replay, he had the man beat. In fact, he had to wait a little bit for the ball, otherwise he might have taken it the distance. 55 seconds to go in the first half. Here comes Quisco back to pass, looking to throw a long ball out there, and it's incomplete intended for Wally Wisniewski. And the clock down to 49 seconds remaining in the half. <laughs> well, they certainly have enough time, 49 seconds. They only need 40 more yards. Ball spotted right inside the 40. And the official signals the play back in. The clock is stopped with that incompletion. Dangerous one, Maines out to the right side. Wisniewski flanked out left. Wisco to pass. Good protection. Another long ball for Maines, and it's incomplete. Good coverage there by the defender on that side. Baker, number 44, stride for stride with a very quick runner, or very quick receiver, Danny Maines. He stayed right with him along the sideline. Wisco cranking it up. Now what do you do with third and ten? Well, they're going to keep going for it. There's no doubt. Probably cool for that fourth down. 43 seconds to go if it comes to that point. From the 40. Remember, North Tonawanda scored 49 points on Tonawanda last year, but this year's team is a much improved Tonawanda team, and everybody thought coming into this game that it'd be just about an even game. They've really had the struggles over the years with the bigger school, NT. Third and ten. Wisco rolling left. Looking to throw downfield, he had struck. Had a man there, and Danny Maines dropped the ball. Prelowitz gave him a good hit, and Maines is a little slow getting up. Well, you pay the price sometimes when you come over the middle. And that time he had a real good chance to make the reception. The, the hit came after he had dropped the ball, so that had no nothing to do with the uh, drop pass. Chance for Danny Maines to get his fourth reception of the first half as well. I think Danny Maines, let's take a look at the replay. There you see him get popped after he showed a little frustration with the drop. Timeout taken by NT. That's their last. And Maines is uh, sh shaken up, but that's the player. Yes, that is Danny Maines in the back. Of that. Really, when you looked at the replay, that was a late hit by uh, Prolowitz that was applied on Maines. It came a little bit after he dropped the football. You could make a case that it's tough for the defensive back to hold up in that situation, but I think it came a little late. Stretching this first half out, it's been a long half already. Uh, some pregame ceremonies that uh, push the kickoff back as we look at the replay one more time. Well, that's a late hit. Official didn't give any indication of the penalty, so they allow the play to stand. Fourth down, and the punting unit uh, might come out with 39 seconds, but let's see. Now we'll, we'll, we'll pull our audience again. 95% were wrong the last time. And I'll, and I'll be part of that 95 again. I think they're going to go for it. Well, they really don't have too much to lose here. Tonawanda will get the ball back at the 40, and they haven't shown much in a long passing. And let's take a look again at this play. They had to throw over the middle to drop, and he gets drilled with the helmet in the back. That's a tough, dangerous play. You, you are going to take some punishment in football at all levels. Fourth down, and they come to the line of scrimmage. And Aaron Wisco will go for it, along with North Tonawanda. From the 40, fourth and 10. Wisco back in the pocket, throws over the middle, it's dropped. And that would have been a, enough for the first down yardage, and Hacker dropped the football. Just amazing. Perfect pass, two good passes in a row. Uh, Wisco is having a great first half, and it could be a tremendous first half. You see the replay one more time as the ball is thrown right into the hands of number 49 coming over the middle. And just unable to make the reception, gathering the ball in. He didn't just look it in all the way to his to the reception. Tanawanda takes over. Come on now, oh! at their own Harvey, 40. Harvey, well, they definitely lead a score before the first half comes to an end. They haven't shown much in a long passing game. Primarily no! short. Dewey to pass to Gross, and they've got him in the backfield. 
He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Again, the sophomore linebacker, very active. Dan Olerman with the back of North Tonawanda players get on the tackle. Tonawanda wants to use one of their timeouts now. 20 seconds remaining in the first half. A good look at quarterback Ken Dewey. Boy, just a tremendous amount of offense rolled up by NT here. Going to want to watch the statistics as we total them up for the first half uh, when we come back to start the second half. It'll just be incredible. It is just like a Buffalo Bills kind of offense with the numbers that North Tonawanda has put up here in the first half. North Tonawanda on a roll, and should they qualify for the playoffs in Class A, that's going to be a heck of a playoffs in the semis. If you take Orchard Park, Sweet Home, North Tonawanda, and project the winner of this week's Lockport Jamestown game. No matter who plays who, you've got some great games. And that would be in the semifinals to get into Rich Stadium. And for our viewing audience, in case you're wondering, the semifinals will be played November 6th and 7th in various sites, out of home games for schools in the semis. And Rich Stadium, November 13th and 14th. Six games this year, six classifications. That will be spread over two days. Both the playoffs will be Friday and Saturday. The running play to Andy Bensick. Andy, Bulldog, after about a three or four yard game. It might be the final play of the first half with 10 seconds to go. Let's see if they'll run another play. First half has been all North Tonawanda. They will not get off another play. And the horn sounds at Clinton 8 Small Stadium in Tonawanda to the absolute delight of all the North Tonawanda Lumberjack fans. The score at halftime, the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks 21 and the Tonawanda Warriors nothing. This week, the Jim Kelly Scholarship Award goes to quarterback Anthony Scott of Grand Island. their lives for a vision. From their passionate fight came one of the most radical doctrines of all time, the Constitution, a doctrine that places the power in the individual, enabling each of us to dream, to inspire, to achieve. Our system is most vital when each of us participates in it. When we vote, we keep this passion alive. Time score North Tonawanda leading Tonawanda 21 to nothing as the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks marching band leaves the field. Frank, a fine job, and they've got a nice round of applause by the entire crowd here. No doubt about it, they've done a very, very entertaining uh, halftime show for the spectators here. And while they're working their way off the field, we'll get an opportunity to talk about the first half of football here, running through some of the scoring and statistics for the first half in which North Tonawanda truly dominated this football game. Opening up the football game early in the game, a reverse handoff to Scott Mole in the first quarter of play. That came at 9.53, an eight-yard run that kept a 93-yard scoring drive, and the two-point conversion was good. The key play of the drive was a 32-yard pass to Wisniewski. And we look at the handoff up the middle to Kevin Piper. That coming in the second quarter, 17-yard touchdown run as he dives into the end zone, a 70-yard scoring drive. There you see it, a 14-0 score, a 21-yard run also involved in the play. And you see Wisco throwing the ball to Danny Maines. Maines takes it to the outside, gets a good block right there, and he carries it into the corner of the end zone. That a 27-yard touchdown pass from Aaron Wisco. That covers 63 yards. The point after was good. There you see it, 21 to nothing. The key play, of course, the touchdown pass with some running in there by Scott Mole. Chance for us also at this point, as you see the 
Tonawanda Warriors come out of their locker room and make their way to the near sideline to talk about the first half statistics on, for dog. both teams. And you'll see it there, domination in total by North Tonawanda as they pick up 13 first downs, three to Tonawanda, 114 yards rushing to 72, 158 yards passing for Aaron Wisco to just 19 for Tonawanda. No turnovers, look at that key statistics. Three turnovers suffered by Tonawanda. Two fumbles and an interception. Penalties, one against NT that slowed down their scoring drive, and none against Tonawanda. The time of possession, always a weird statistics because it really doesn't really add up to much unless you're uh, uh, winning on the scoreboard. But uh, you can see NT hasn't had the ball as much, but they've got the 21-point uh, lead. They've got a high-powered offense and some of the outstanding individual stats for the first half Walt, They can run through them very quickly. For Tonawanda, their best player so far, Mark Prelowitz with 38 uh, yards on eight carries. And Dewey's completed six of six passes, but for very little yardage, under 20 yards. For North Tonawanda, it's been Piper with 36 yards rushing and nine carries and a touchdown. Scott Mole, 75 yards in the first half on uh, six carries and a touchdown. And there you see Aaron Wisco statistics. Nine for 20, 158 yards, one touchdown. And uh, that touchdown going to Danny Mays for 27 yards out. And he's had probably three or four passes, Walt, that I can remember that were dropped. Well, let's listen to the officials uh, key in as they prepare for the second half. And Tonawanda will get the ball to start the second half. They're down 21 to nothing now. The key statistic, I think, looking at uh, the overall team statistics, obviously the three turnovers on the Tonawanda Warriors. Uh, they're a Division Three team, maybe the, one of the top teams in Division Three, if not the top team, but they're an undersized team as far as on the beef, the line of scrimmage. Big advantage to North Tonawanda. And, Frank, when you play a team that's bigger than you physically, you just can't give up the turnovers like this. Well, that's exactly right. They needed to play a near-perfect game as although they've had a great record this year, they've probably come in a little bit of as an underdog. NT's dominated the series over the years, and that's because of their size, their ability to get big, big physical players on the front line and really crunch things out. This year, a little different tactic as it was last year with the wide open type offense under Aaron Wisco. They're able to score quickly and score uh, in bunches, and it's resulted in a three touchdown lead right here. Uh, that it may be just too much for Tonawanda to overcome. See Wally Wisniewski with four catches for 80 yards. And, uh, 20-yard per catch average for Wally Wisniewski, our player of the week last week against Lockport, by the way. And so Wally, was, see Wally, again. Wally Wisniewski in two games, in a, in, a, in a game and a half, has caught 10 balls now. He had 12 catches coming into the Lockport game. Piper to kick off the second half, another low kickoff, and again, it's uh, fielded by the up man, this time Sinoselski, 35, and cracked down near the 37-yard line. A good open field tackle by Fisher. Number 29 as he comes off the field on special teams. Zinoskowski, a pretty nice return, a short return of seven yards out near the 37. Now Tonawanda has to get it in gear. Remember last year they were trailing big time in the game, made a spirited comeback before being uh, a loser, 49 to 27. But I think they got the game a lot closer than that, Frank, and then NT scored a couple of uh, touchdowns in the fourth quarter to pull away. But they were down by a much bigger score last year. If I remember correctly. Yeah, it wasn't much of a game until they made it a game. Let's see if they can do the same thing again this year. They're going to have to score quick. 12-minute quarters at the high school level. Dewey the quarterback. Back to pass. He's going to roll left. And he's going to be chopped down at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for a yard. And Dewey took a tremendous hit on the play. Yeah, number 59 in on the tackle there. For uh, North Tonawanda. And that's the right tackle, Larry... Davignon, short pickup of a yard for Dewey. He was looking to roll out, and the block was not able to be completed in front of him to keep that tackler from coming up from behind, and he had to turn it upfield faster than he had wanted to. The left end is Mark Burke at 240 pounds. The left tackle is Rick Benson at 215 pounds. The right tackle, Davigon, at 175 pounds. Let's watch the replay. Here you see one more time, and a pretty good hit there as he was wrapped up around the ankle. Right end is Kevin DeRosa at 250 for North Tonawanda. Some big boys on that front line. Dewey's pass is caught. And a first down for the big tight end, Mike Harvey. He's six foot six and 198 pounds, a junior. And that's the first we've heard out of big Mike Harvey in this ball game. Look at the replay of it as Dewey rolls out. He has Bensick as a safety valve receiver to his right side. He decides to take it upfield, and Harvey is really wide open on the play. Nice pass route that he must have run to get that free. 15-yard reception. Now we want to salute the rest of the defensive players for North Tonawanda who have done the job. Wisco and Orem, Fisher, Red Ghost, along with Perna, the linebackers. 
Messenberg and Fisher alternating at a corner along with Hacker and Snipkowski, the safety, have all played well. Dewey's pass is caught by Krelowitz behind the line of scrimmage, actually. He comes upfield now and still on his feet and manages to fall forward for a yard gain at best. And he took that pass about five yards deep in the backfield. Yeah, he doesn't get much out of it, actually. They'll give him, let's see, two yards there for Krelowitz on his second reception. One of those plays where Dewey's rolling to that side and the linebackers and the corners, they really can string things out and just watch Krelowitz. And Dewey's, if he's going to turn it upfield, he's going to run into the pursuit because he's not that quick a foot to get away from these uh, pursuing players. So they had it well read and uh, covered very quickly. See the replay one more time. Prelowitz fighting for that additional yardage. Prelowitz, like Bensick, the type of back that you really have to wrap up and stop. If you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. It's second down and nine. Dewey on a straight handoff to uh, Bensick, oh, and Bensick squirts forward for a nice gain. That's a tough run. Bensick on the carry. Andy Bensick, a very hard runner for a 180 pound back. He uh, has nine touchdowns this year and over 800 yards rushing. He is their top performer as far as yards rushing and touchdowns. Prelowitz has over 600 yards and five touchdowns. And he has also thrown four touchdowns on the option pass. You see Baker come to the near sideline standing with the coaching staff. Anxious to get back into the football game, but his team needs points. Third down play. Third down and let's call it three. Dewey on the option will keep it. Get near the sticks. That's and let's see if he has the first down yardage. He's on the spot of the football, but he did a good job again. Uh, I said before that he's not that quick a foot, but he's very elusive, shifty kind of runner. He's not maybe going to break away from you, but he certainly is very, very hard to break down with an easy uh, shot tackle. He's gonna, just going to give you a little bit of uh, a body to shoot for. The officials confer that it is a first down for Tonawanda. As right guard Greg Case has indicated at the end of that play, and it was indeed a first down. Their fifth first down of the game, two here on this drive, here to open up the second half. Well, they look a lot sharper, Frank, don't they, here in the second half? Well, they need something. They certainly had to uh, go to the locker room dejected, being down three three touchdowns, but you've got to score the first to make it a possible comeback. Well, this is their season on the line here. It would end tonight with a loss for Tonawanda. Down big time, 21-0, Dewey to pass. Looking right side. Rushes on. Dewey steps up, throws. It's caught by Harvey, the big tight end. He'll pull his way forward for the first down. He's inside the 25-yard line. Second reception and a good one, a 16-yard pickup, keeping the drive alive. You well, know, Walt, this is just unbelievable. I've got Dewey nine for nine. That's not too bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> Let's look at this. Good patience back there as he waited for somebody to get free. Now look, there's two runners there, and Prelowitz gives him a decent block that helps him uh, just pick up a few more yards down to, what, the 21, 22-yard line. Well, they found a new man to go to, and it's Mike Harvey, the tight end, at six foot six. It's a first down play, and Dewey will keep it, and Dewey will be dropped for a loss. Very nice read defensively back to the 25-yard line, so a three-yard loss there. A couple of notes coming into this game. The Tonawanda defense has not given up a single point in the fourth quarter of any game this year. So can't, if they can get close, they've been a fourth quarter team. Al Regdos with the stop, as you'll see him wrap up the play and head back to the huddle. He's been in on a number of stops. We've called his number a few times in this game. Pretty big play there on a the first down call. Second down and 13 from the 25-yard line of North Tonawanda. Dewey will roll left. Look to the flat to Prelowitz, and Prelowitz makes a great catch, but he's dropped for a yard loss on the play. That's a shame. That's Tremendous a shame. catch. Good one-handed grip, as you said, but you got to go forward up the field then, second and long. Now it's third and long coming up. Third and 14, actually, as he loses the yard on the play. Now everybody rolling to that side of the field, including the defense, and once again, Prelowitz is just a safety valve. Dewey's kind of rolling, looking up field. He decides to check off the pass, and there's not really that much room for Prelowitz to go forward. Now very active linebacker Dan Oram in on the stop. Only a sophomore having a big game here as the rest of the defensive unit for North Tonawana has played very well as a unit. Dewey to pass. Throws it downfield and it is picked off. Fisher's got his second interception of the game. He returns it up the right side where he's under tackle near the 20 yard line and a flag goes down. We might have an additional yardage paced off against Tonawanda for a face it. Well, that's frustration as they had good penetration, a little pushing and shoving and some of the Tonawanda players getting in there to pull their teammates out on the North Tonawanda sideline. 
Emotions running a little high here as we open up the second half. Krelowitz involved, comes out with his hands up like he's an innocent bystander. A frustration there, obviously evident on the side of the Tonawanda players. Dewey throwing the ball for the big tight end, hoping that the tight end could get up into the air over the center of the field. And there just wasn't that much room for him to do it, and the ball floated to the deep safety on the play. Ryan throws it off his back foot, and he didn't get much on the ball. And a good tap-up play into the air for number 29 to come down with it and take it back upfield, Fisher. Well, it is going to be a penalty on the uh, Tonawanda team who's we'll late for the call. Well, it's going to push uh, the ball well upfield out to the 36-yard line, looks like. It was a face mask. Well, what do you do if you're North Tonawanda? You've got that high-powered offense. The field here. We talked about uh, at the end of the first half, uh, sitting on the ball, running the clock out. I know that. Three touchdown lead. Well, I think things are going so well, you don't change a thing. You just keep doing what you've been doing. It's work. And here's a running fumble. play fumble. Ball is loose, and I think he might have gotten it back. The running back, fortunately for him, Mull, the ball bounced forward. That's how, how good he's going in this game. He gains two more yards. When things are right, they're very right. Mull gets two yards, as you said. And as you said, the ball was batted out of his hand as he tried to turn it upfield. And he was able to dive right back on top of it before the Tonawanda Warriors could close on him. Bill McClure almost had the recovery there, 78, the senior right tackle. They might go to a little bit more of a running game with the 21-0 lead. This goes pass caught by Maines at the 40, and he's dropped right there by Frazier and company. Frazier was the second man in. First man in on the tackle was Prelowitz, number 34. Prelowitz is a very, very sure tackle. He's really six. showing his athletic ability here tonight as you see him wrap up and roll right over, taking the legs and the momentum away from the player with the football, Danny Maines. Third and six coming up here. Wisco's had an incredible half of football coming into this second half. He's completed his first half uh, pass now the second half. And uh, right now he's just leading his team like a, a true leader on the field. Well, I think the strategy for the second half might be run first down and then pass second and third. Pass wide open, caught by Maines. Turns it upfield inside the 50, near the 45 for a first down. That ball right on target by Wisco. Wisco looking very, very sharp. Maines with his fifth reception. 68 yards for Maines. Now, Tim Kenny is warming up a six foot three junior, throwing the football on the sideline for Tonawanda, taking some snaps. We might see Kenny come in at the quarterback spot. Well, he's going to have to if he's there throwing quarterback. Just step back in the shotgun situation and try and throw the ball. Beautiful pass thrown to Maines, and Maines had a beautiful route. He must have taken it deep and then just cut back uh, towards the sideline there or towards the quarterback uh, because the defender was at least five yards off of him. Now, the problem there is. The Tonawanda quarterback, Dewey, just threw his first incompletion, that interception. That's right. But that would be his second one because Fisher had an earlier interception. That was off of Krelowitz's oh! option. Krelowitz, you're correct. Running play and nothing there at the line of scrimmage. Flags on the field near midfield. Piper, the fullback in on a rear carry. A legal motion on the offense. Their second penalty, 15 total yards. It's been a penalty-free football game, I would say, thus far. One so far on Tonawanda, one and two on um, NT so far in the game. Well, I've got the strategy down for North Tonawanda. It's pretty obvious. Now. They'll run on first down every time, I think, Frank, just to eat up that 30 seconds on the clock on their possession. And then, depending what they do on first down, that will dictate second down. That penalty, by the way, was declined because it was a loss of a yard for Piper. 4.30 to go in the third quarter. It's been a rapid third quarter. Now they'll pass on second down. Let's go to pass. Long ball. Mains goes up and a great effort, but could not come down with the football. Well, he would have been out of bounds had he had possession anyway. Come on! Put some pressure on his Boy, he really went up. He made a valiant try for that catch. He almost came down with it. Third down now and 11. Third down and 11 coming up. Not nearly could we say any plays a key play right now. 21 nothing to score. Oh, everything's fun now. North Tonawanda in full control of the game at this point. And here comes that reverse play. Oh, he's got room to go. And it's Mole again, turning it upfield well short of the first down yardage. Picked up a few yards on the play, call it a gain of uh, nearly five. 
I thought he had a lot more room to go, but the pursuit from the safety and the linebackers on the inside were able to get over there and close him down along the near sideline. But with the blocker out in front of him and Wisco, as you see Wisco lead the play, that's where he lost a little bit of uh, yardage because he had to go so wide around the corner. But Wisco out in front of him, I thought he had a good chance to pick up uh, the necessary yardage. Fine shoulder tackle by Jenkins in on the secondary for the Tonawanda Club. And Mole is going to be a player that has to be reckoned with the next couple of years after this. He's only a sophomore. Ron Jenkins, a junior, in on that stop. And they pull Jenkins out as he fixes his helmet and puts uh, Siniskowski into the game to return the punt. Piper, who does all the place kicking and punting, is into punt it away for North Tonawanda. Siniskowski and Baker back deep. They're going to try and block it. Oh, beautiful kick. High. Baker calls for the fair catch. It bounces at the 10 and rolls into the end zone. For a moment, it looked like that ball might hold up on the roller and be down inside the five. Well, it's a very dry track out there, and I gotta tell you, it is as cold as you can imagine so far this football season. We gotta be right around the freezing mark now as uh, everybody's bundled up in the stands and heavy winter woolen coats out right now. Well, for us being the local origination sportscasters at Adelphia Cable would like to shake the hands of the man or woman that made the decision for the board to move this game up to 6 o'clock yearly instead of the 7.30 start. Frank. Well, it's a lot easier to keep a lot of people under control, too, with all these fans coming in. It's a good idea. And that extra hour and a half helps as far as the cold barrier. <laughs> it gets a lot colder at the 7.30. Dewey on the option. Krelowitz evades a tackle, and then Wisco uh, knocks him down, or that's Bensick, at the 20-yard line. No gain on the play with a lot of hard work, though, for Andy Bensick. Well, the keys of the game were simple. As far as Tonawanda was concerned, run the ball, stop the pass, and keep the crowd in the game. Well, the crowd is pretty quiet, and that's because the other two didn't work. Well, North Tonawanda, let's take a look at Bensick trying to sweep right. There you see him, and just able to get back to the line of scrimmage. It's so much fun when you know that the opposing quarterback is not going to throw the ball deep because you can simply close and uh, force him to, to make a play one way or the other, whether it's a pitch out or a short screen pass or whatever, but you're able to put uh, defensive pressure on him. Dewey hands off again to Bensick, short gain on the play. Uh, now, Prelowitz this time, excuse me. Uh, Dewey did remain the quarterback. We had Kennedy warming up on the sideline, but uh, Dewey, who's had a fine game, 9 out of 10 passing, has stayed in. And that was uh, Mark Krelowitz on the carry for short yardage. Yeah, he gets about three yards. Again, a very tough running back in Mark Krelowitz, continuing the Krelowitz tradition of outstanding athletes here in the Tonawanda High School area. Now the clock working against Tonawanda, 2-0-8 oh, and running. Time remaining in the third quarter when you are running the football. It eats up that clock. Now they are in a definite passing situation. Third down, Dewey rolling, throws, got a man. It's caught by Krelowitz. First down, and he's down at the 35, but very, very sure tackling there by Wisco on defense. Krelowitz is the type of guy, Frank, that could break it all the way. Yeah, he is, and uh, they had to close quickly on him. Now they have a couple of players covering him, but you can see that uh, MT is sort of dropping back. Uh, their, at least their deep backs are and preventing any long gains. They let the thing fall in front of them, and uh, although Prelowitz gets the first down yardage, there's no real threat yet, and every time that uh, the player stays in bounds, the clock continues to move, and the time is very much on the side of the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks with a three-touchdown lead. Orum was in on the stop along with Wisco. It's up to the 35-yard line. Dewey going to pass. First down. Roll right. Throw on the run. It's caught by Gross. He's thrilled by Wisco. Did he catch it? Did he hang in? He must have. Enough for the first down. A very close to it. Big hit. Right at the sticks. But boy, did he take a hit. Well, that's, that's just driving through with the shoulder pad to the shoulder pad. The receiver is at the mercy of the defender closing. And this time the defender had a chance to really tee off and knock the uh, receiver right off his feet. They're going to say he's just short of the first down. Let's look at the replay one more time. As Dewey waits and waits and finally finds the receiver. Now watch, you see Wisco driving right to the turf. Very, very solid tackle. Second down and one from the 45-yard line. They will fake it to Bensick. Dewey will throw on the run. And it's a reception for Mark Prelowitz. First down. Well, Dewey, very impressive here. <laughs> well, how 
how much better can you be? I just can't believe it. Well, you know, we keep uh, unofficial statistics, of course, but look at this. I'm right across the board. I'm circled all the way through with the one interception. First and 13 for 13 with just one interception. That makes him 13 of 14. Look at the roll to the right and a tremendous reception up in the air by Prowlis. <laughs> he reminds you a lot with the, the opposing or the other number 34 in uh, Buffalo Bills uh, uniform. And, of course, Thurman Thank Thomas, you. the ability to run the ball hard and out of the backfield with sure hands and make good receptions. Now, Tonawanda trying to make a game of it. They have a first down at the 43-yard line with 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Dewey will pass. Rush is on. This is set up nicely to Bensick. Bensick could not get away from Wisco. Picked up good yardage near the 35-yard line, inside the 35-yard line. And the third quarter comes to an end with that play. And Tonawanda, the fourth quarter has been theirs all year. And they hold up four on the sideline. But they're down 21 points. The end of three quarters, North Tonawanda, 21, Tonawanda, nothing. Hi, I'm Mark Kelso. The equipment I use on the field protects me from serious injury, and I'd be crazy not to use it. But every year, over 24,000 people in New York State suffer permanent head and spinal cord injuries while driving a car, riding a bicycle, or participating in sports. Why? Because they don't use their safety equipment. So please, when you're riding in your car, wear a seatbelt. If you go for a ride on a bicycle, put on a safety helmet. And look below the surface of the water before you dive in. Think first and use your mind to protect your body. Fourth quarter underway and a pass thrown and incomplete as you see off the screen pass number 48 closest to the ball Chris Perna senior five foot eight 170 pound linebacker right there number 48 he was the closest man there as he botched up that play with the Tonawanda Warriors. Dewey the quarterback finally. That's the first ball that hit the turf that either he didn't complete or was intercepted. That's just unbelievable. What a streak. What a what a what a go of it. The unfortunate part is there's no points to show for his great performance. You can't fault that on Dewey. Look at this crazy play. Remember, they've got three guys 12 yards behind the line of scrimmage, and now they break up. They've got Gross and two big people on the left side, so now flags on the play. Throw out to the right side. What a shame. They're gonna Harvey get makes the reception, call. but... Something's wrong with the offense. Unfortunately, Don O'Brien's going to say illegal procedure and wipe out the penalty. Never seen a play that developed like that. Another time to tell you our officials, the referee is Don O'Brien. The umpire is Andy Padalecki. The field judge is Paul Gagliardi. And the linesman is Jim Hutter. They took left tackle Eisenhut and left guard Sander and flanked them out with Gross. And it would appear that they would throw a little pass to Gross and block for him on that side, but they threw to the right side to Harvey. And that was called an illegal formation, so a legal procedure on the offense. And there you see head coach Glenn Bateman asking for an explanation. He doesn't like the call. He put, probably put a lot of time into that gadget play. Well, there's Glenn Bateman on the sideline there, right there as he puts his headset on. The head coach, we inadvertently did uh, not refer to uh, Glenn the last game. We referred to his assistant coach there with him as Mr. Bateman. But that was Glenn Bateman right there putting on his... Uh, Headsets in his first year. The assistant coach that we're referring to is still his assistant, Pat Wyatt, and their athletic director, Robert Hap Halloway at Tonawanda. Just two coaches at the varsity level there with the varsity team. Glenn Bateman, first year, he's had a great year, and Pat Wyatt, his assistant. Second down and 15 from the 37 yard line. Just underway in the fourth quarter. Dewey, screen pass, and if he caught it, that would be a loss, but I think it's an incomplete pass. Let's see, did they catch it? Yep, Gross caught it for a four-yard loss. Well, they smelled that one out. That will keep the clock running with 11.35 and counting down, time remaining in the ballgame. I don't know, but, you know, I'd like to be an optimist here for the Tonawanda fans, but I, I can't see how they can come back and win this ball game down 21-0. Well, the game was still a game after the opening kickoff, and you 
had the Tonawanda Warriors playing with a lot of emotion. They pinned Nunn T back at their own seven yard line to start the first drive of the game. And on third, and I think it was about six or seven, uh, they had him there and Wisniewski comes up with the first big catch of the ball game. And from that point on, it was all NT in the first half. Couple that with the three turnovers suffered by Tonawanda in the first half and they just took themselves out of the game. So this one's been kind of on the downslide for quite a while here in this football game. Well, we know one thing for sure as you look at Glenn Bateman, the head coach in Tonawana in his first year. Should North Tonawana go on to win this game, it ensures one team of a playoff berth already, and that would be in Class B2, and that would be the Lackawanna Steelers. They ground out that field, regardless of what they do against Medina this evening. They would have enough points to win that fourth and final spot. And it would put North Tonawanda into a position to take the third or fourth wild card spot in the A classification. It would also knock the Tonawanda Warriors out of the playoff situation and finish their season at five and three. Stranger things have happened, but I've yet to see it. 21 nothing with 11:30 to go. It just doesn't appear that this is Tonawanda's night. They've had a very, very successful season and. Uh... You know, nothing to be ashamed of at all. You come away from a high school football season with a winning record. That's something to say. Blitz is on. Toss is intercepted. It's picked off. And oh, heading back the other way and falling is Chris Perna. What a shame, too. As Dewey was down, he was hit pretty hard as he released the football. He's slow to get to his feet. Perna keeps his balance. He's got a touchdown. And that's the fifth turnover on Tonawanda. That's five too many. Yeah, especially when NT hasn't committed the turnover in the game. North Tonawanda looking very sharp here, leading 21-0, about to put this one away, or they've already put it away with 11-20 remaining. Will they start running the ball, or will they continue to pass? You see the sophomore putting the pressure on Orum and the interception by the senior, Chris Perna. Well, I think they'll continue to run on first down, which they do, and pass on second down, which they have done on every series in the second half. And we've got a late flag coming in from Jim Hutter, as I believe it's Piper who was drilled on the play. Brought to his knees after a yard pickup. A lot of the 10,000 in attendance here were just estimating starting to file out. Take a look at the interception again. Yeah, one more time. Now watch Perna. Oh, if he could have just kept his balance. There was nobody, and I mean nobody, between him and the end zone. A big 15-yard personal foul call. 11-0-1 remaining. Some of the players that uh, we have not mentioned. They might see action later on in this game include Bill Snyder and Dave Oakley, Jason Riley and Jim Bull, Ryan Maloney, Mike McIntyre, Timmy DeWell, Andy Deneb. Here's a fake. Let's go under tackle, throws, and it's almost intercepted. Some more players that have not seen much action from North Tonawanda. Paul Tatori, Dave Ball, John Joy, Eric Krieger will take a look at the replay. And you see it one more time as Wisco. I'm surprised again that they're looking to throw the football, rolling out with some pressure from uh, the big guy chasing him down. And then the ball's deflected up in the air, almost intercepted, of course, with a chance for Tonawanda to come up with their first turnover of the game, but they just were unable to get to it. It's just the way the game has gone for them. Chris Crelot, Dave Gaff, Jason Brock, Eric Smith. There's a rushing play. Heading up the field, the first down, or near the sticks for the first down for North Tonawanda. Yeah, that's Piper, and he did a good job. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. Probably, as you said, enough for the first down, and they run everybody to the opposite side of the strong formation. First down, North Tonawanda. Piper with 48 yards and 10 carries unofficially and one touchdown to his credit. NT's 15th first down of the game statistically. They were dominating in the first half. NT, or pardon me, Tonawanda in the third quarter had two very good long drives to put some more yardage totals to their credit and time of possession, but unfortunately they were not able to cash that chip in. First down play from the 14-yard line and a rushing play and very short yardage there for, I believe that's Hack. No, that's not. That's Mole. Yeah, Mole the finally. Carry. They finally read it right. And Prella, which was the guy that read it, holds Mole to, let's see, I don't think he even picked up a yard on the play. Rounding out the roster for NT, Rick Benson, Jake Osher, Jim Bannis, Dan Folson, Mark Lusaganis, Jeff Morris, and Tony John to some players that haven't seen that much action in the game. Head coach Dave Anastasi, assistant coaches Doug DeLucha, 
Dave Vona, Les Sheasley, Ron Hopkins, Fran Burke, Athletic Director John Chisera. So second down play with Mole in motion left. Wisco to pass, rushes on, and he throws on the run. It's incomplete. A little bit behind his intended receiver, Wally Wisniewski. Well, in the first half, he attempted 20 passes. Here in the second half, with the five uh, or 21 point lead, he's attempted five more. I'm very surprised at that. Well, you don't change what's working for you. <laughs> it's uh, like the Buffalo Bills. They like to uh, go with the same type of game plan, and it's been questioned, and I think it might have hasn't cost them too many games because Buffalo hasn't lost too many games the last three years, but when they have a big lead, they don't take much time off the clock. Well, I don't think that they can question a strategy of a team that has been to the Super Bowl two straight years. If they had, as they haven't been able to win the Super Bowl, uh, that's when you start questioning as everybody's gotten into in the last uh, six months or so. You see Wisco, the quarterback, holding his right knee there after the play. Might have got dinged. A little screen pass, and it's incomplete. And it would have been a touchdown had he been able to wait just a split second longer for a mole to get free. Wisco had his man there, and there was a wall in front of him. Good play call, I thought, that time. Kind of a safe pass, but uh, too much pressure on Wisco that time, dropping back. Fourth and ten play coming up. And we talked a lot about the playoffs, but when the semifinals come up, I would imagine that the, uh, the, the best record would take on the uh, weakest record among the wild card team that makes it in each classification. It would be an interesting matchup in the A division if North Tonawanda makes the playoffs to see who their first round opponent would be. Fourth down and 10. Lumberjacks will go for it. Wisco to pass, fires, it's incomplete. Again, he throws it behind his intended receiver, Danny Maines. And he might not have had enough for the first down yardage anyway. Well, it would have been tough. He was looking to run that curl pattern where he comes back to the football then on his own with his uh, athletic ability, tries to juke or elude the defender closing on the play. Maines goes to the sideline. He's had a nice day, five catches for 68 yards and a touchdown. Wisco, as we said, it completed 11 passes now in 27 attempts and uh, some significant yardage on the passing side of the ball. As we look at the replay, there you see him launch the ball. He threw a little bit behind Maines. He was coming across the field and he had to drop back with his shoulder a little bit to his left and try and pull it in. Tanawanda takes over at their own 23-yard line. New quarterback in Kenny. Kenny's first action, he rifles it out there. It's caught by Gross. Oh, look out, look and out. Headed for the end zone. He is going to go all the way. Touchdown. Kenny comes in and says, here's how you do it, coach. No problem. Let's look back. It's a 77-yard 7 touchdown pass. Woo! To Gross. <laughs> look at Kenny. Oh, they're rocking this place, too, up here. Fans love it. Kenny can't believe it himself. First pass, 77-yard touchdown to Gross. Can't do much better than that, Frank. Oh, that's exciting. Gross breaks it for his seventh touchdown this year. And there's a lot of time left, 9.23. Let's watch the replay here. Boy, he just stepped up and launched it, and then this guy here, Gross, gets a nice block and then runs away from the defenders who leaped out to try and strip him, or uh, touch his ankles at least and trip him up. And they weren't able to get him. They will try for the single point. Ethan Hanalbin in for the extra point try. Krelowitz puts it down. Hanalbin's kick is up. The kick is good. In fact, it goes over the house. At Clinton Aid Small Stadium and out of the ballpark. Well, congratulations to that young man, Matt Gross. He's taken some tough hits after catching the football. He's now caught five passes for 85 yards, including that 77-yard scoring strike from the new quarterback into the game. Kenny steps in and throws a strike for a touchdown. Tim Kenny's got good size. He must be their next year's quarterback. He's, what, 6'3"? And he's a junior. 175 pounds or so, a junior. That's Pretty correct. strong arm. As you see the replay again, Gross now, taking it the distance. That's going to tire you off. Well, here's the problem that we, we alluded to in the fact that North Tonawanda, no huddle offense, passing offense. You don't take time off the clock. The last series, they had an opportunity to run the clock some. And, and, and I thought they should have, uh, but, you know, I've been wrong so many times I've given up on that. i got to figure I'm wrong more than I'm right now. Well, it starts to happen to you as you get older, you know. And I, and I think it's been happening to us even when we were younger, following these yes. games. 12, 13 years, I would say. That, that's, what, that's the point about being a fan. 
you can still be calling a game and be a fan and try and figure out what the heck will happen. And usually it doesn't happen the way you figure it. Oh, listen to the crowd here. This looks like an onside kick situation with 9.23 to go. Let's see what happens. And why not? Why not? But we've been wrong before. The North Tonawanda has nine people inside of the 35. Now they're going to break it and maybe kick it long. Let's see. Or they're going to come left with the onside kick. They kick it deep. <laughs> Hacker. Fine return. He's been better off with the onside kick as he returned it to the 42-yard line. Nice return there by Hacker. That'll calm the crowd down a little bit. I hope the support beams are good here in the booth that we're at. Yeah, me too, really. This thing is really shaking up here. I know our cameraman uh, next to us, uh, James Braun, who takes up a lot of space, has uh, had a little problem holding on to the, the, the handles of this camera. The camera takes the space, not James. James is a fit uh, young man. Okay. They spot it back to the 41-yard line, and it's the handoff up the middle, and they'll run clock now. So Let's see who's got the football. Looks like the fullback, Piper. Tonawanda can't get so aggressive, though, that they commit penalties here trying to strip the ball. They've got to be at least aware that one thing they need to do is stop on three straight plays and force a punt. Uh, they can't get so involved in trying to strip the ball that they stop tackling well. This game was so important that it drew up to 10,000 people and even had the live eye, WIVB Channel 4 and their sportscaster, yeah, Van, Miller, Van Miller, out very, here very doing pleasant, the sports. Very pleasant. Wanted to work with us, but we told them no. Wanted to do the game, but we said the jobs were filled. Send a resume. No, we don't want to get carried away. Second down <laughs> and seven, and a running play up the middle. Good yardage there. Of yep. course, Van does work for our cable system. Yeah. And he works on the Empire Sports Network and does the bowling show occasionally. Yeah. Piper on the carry again, and always a professional. Oh, yeah, he does. calls a great game, too, for the Buffalo Bills all these years. Makes it very exciting. Well, this is what we thought they would do on their last drive, and they uh, did not. They decided to throw the ball. Now they're keeping it on the ground. If they pick up a first down, that really sends a message to Tonawanda. If they're forced to punt, Tonawanda still has a life. But they're not taking a lot of time in the huddle. They get up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Get the play off. And they've got Mo for loss. He is hammered in the backfield. It was 84 in there first, and I don't remember calling his number too much. Jason Smith, who has not played that much in this game, and Smith was helped then by Prelowitz and his teammate. I believe that was 70 Johnny Burroughs. There is Burroughs going off, but I thought Smith got in there first. Let's see if 84 did. Well, it's two times as we see the replay again. Yeah, he smelled it out perfectly. Both players did actually. And Prelowitz with a hit down around the, uh, the knee there, kind of a dangerous touch tackle. Well, the punting unit comes on, and there is still hope in Tonawanda. We'd like to knock their neighbors from across the canal out of the playoffs. But North Tonawanda definitely has the upper hand here. Piper to kick it away. Great kick. A booming kick. Hits at the 25. Takes a slight roll in favor of North Tonawanda and is out at the 21. A pretty nice looking punt. 35 yards. Yeah, very nice punt. He kicked it away from the uh, return man so he couldn't get uh, uh, anything going, any momentum going, and he actually kicked it to the sideline, which worked out well for him. He had good distance on it, and there's no return. 6.52 time remaining in the game, and Tonawanda uh, needs a quick score. Well, they got to come out of the huddle quickly. Let's see if they go with a no-huddle type attack. The thing to remember now, too, is uh, Tanawanda needs not only two scores, they need to win the game. A tie, I don't think, would help them. Kenny rifles it out there, and it's incomplete. Oh, he, he did rifle it, too. He had number 44, Mike Baker, in the vicinity, and he's got a nice arm here. Yeah, he does. Sets up very nicely, and he really throws the ball on the line. That one covered uh, probably 30 yards, and it was like a... As you've said so many times, a frozen rope. His uh, senior player is advising him, telling him where they can get open, too. Well, he's the quarterback for next year, no doubt, for Tanawanda. Kenny, Tim Kenny, 6'3", 175, a junior. Dewey's had a great career and a great season as the senior quarterback. Second down and 10 from the 21. Three receivers out to the right side. Dewey rolling right, pump fakes. Now he's in trouble, throws nice play to Benson. Benson evades a tackle, 30, here he goes, 35. He's really racked up at the 36. 
14 yard reception for Bensick. Nice play though by the quarterback. He picked the right guy. He was looking upfield for a long time. Then under pressure, he decides to get rid of the football at just the right moment. Well, I had to make my call and look who was receiving the ball, but I'm sure Kenny got hit after he released that ball. They pay the price. They'll work up a little bit of a sweat and get a few bruises in a game like this. They're coming quickly to the huddle, though. Or coming out of the huddle and ready to go with the uh, live action here. Uh, you saw 34 Prelowitz coming out and flanking out to the left side. Will he be the man they'll go to from the 36? Kenny looking to the left side. Throws out here for Gross. Too high. It's picked off. And down the sideline. It's Fisher, and he's got the trifecta. That's his third one. Fisher, three interceptions. What a ball game. Do we have a flag on the field or no? The official's just uh, getting the units back on. A little extra blocking after the play. Nice return by Fisher, and unfortunately for Tonawanda, I'm sure that's going to seal it up right now. Well, I'm afraid that I won't say that yet with 6.05 to go, but it looks good for North Tonawanda. I'm going to go on record. Okay. It's on tape anyway. <laughs> you see the lofty pass. He overthrew the receiver who was open. So is Fisher. That's one of those plays where the deep back has more room to drop back and get underneath the ball than the receiver does himself. Now Fisher really feeling good about this game. The senior right inside linebacker. Three interceptions. Here goes Piper. Good yardage. Oh, he barrels over Smith. Rambles over Ronnie Jenkins and first carries down. Jenkins for a first down. He gets the North center on the first down. Piper, a pretty strong looking run that time. That's one of his best efforts in this game. Well, 66 yards now for Piper and 13 carries. Kevin Piper does the kicking, kicked a beautiful field goal last week that proved to be the final outcome, I guess. So the difference in the ball game was three points against Lockport. Well, now what North Tonawanda wants to do is run the clock. They don't really need to. They could use another score, but they need to take time off the clock. Piper again surges forward for a positive gain. Looks like nearly five yards. Piper on the carry again. Let's see where they mark him down. Six, almost seven yards. Nice carry. And he surged forward for an additional he yard or two. And he's got a gain of six. He six, okay. Yep. 450 to go and the clock winding down. We had told you about some of the NT players who have uh, not seen that much action. We'll run down the Tonawanda roster in just a moment. There's the clock telling you the whole story. They trail by two touchdowns. Rushing play right side. Does he get out of bounds? No, he stays in bounds. So that will milk the clock some more. He's short of the first down also, so it'll set up a third down play. Piper's going to go back to the huddle and say, give somebody else the ball. No, but never. You He's never taking a beating that. here. You never want to do that. Piper really has taken some heavy hits. He's a 175-pound senior. He's been the workhorse here on this drive. Some players who have uh, not seen that much action for Tonawanda include Jim Help, Corey Abdullah, Joel Cannon, who's warming up on the sidelines, Mike Harvey, Jeff Sherman, a rushing play into the middle of the line, and it looks like they have the first down. Yeah, Wisco on the keeper, making sure that he keeps possession of the football. And also getting the first down, killing more clock, keeping the drive alive. Tonawanda without much hope left here as they have, I believe, all three timeouts available, but you're down by two scores and you're being pushed back towards your own goalposts. Matt Roll, Pete Padilla, Gary Liss, Tom Olka, Paul Radaviski, Radakiewski, that is, Brian Stone, Mike O'Connor, Mike Nucci, Ray Romanowski, Steve Price, Eric Rhodes, Chris Kelta, First down play for North Tonawanda again. It's the fullback Piper for short yardage. Jay Matuski, Jason Smith, who came on and played well in the last couple of series. Jason Lothery, head coach Glenn Bateman, assistant Pat Wyatt, Robert Half Holloway, the athletic director. So we tried to get everybody's name in the best we could there for both schools. I mean, it's got to be tough. A lot of these young guys, Frank, they practice all year, to, don't get a lot of playing time because maybe their athletic ability is good, but not as good as some of the other kids. Well, it's all part of being uh, part of a team, though. There are always players who are stars, and then there are players who fill the supporting roles, and in most cases, none are more important than the other. At least that's the intention of athletics. Second down and 10 from the 13-yard line. You know, after this play, Piper might just want to give it up. 
Well, they blew the play down before the ball came free that Piper was down. Black will continue to run. 2.29 to go. Our executive producer has been Rick Carnick and our producer, director, David D. A little surprised as you see the replay there. Piper really struggling, and he was down, of course, but Brown really uh, popped the ball loose. But now is the time to finally maybe get somebody else in there who will be able to pick up some positive yardage and go forward at least because uh, Piper's got to be a little bit tired. He's carried the ball the last four or five times in a row. You mentioned uh, Rick Carnett and David D. Our engineer, Gary Black, on videotape. Debbie Jackson for this game. Our camera people, Sue Murphy, James Braun, Ned Niedermeyer, and Mark Pucci. Nikki Berg on graphics, and here's a rushing play for Mole, headed towards the end zone. Touchdown! And on statistics right here up in the booth with us, Don Kawan. And Mole has another touchdown. He's had a fine game for the sophomore. We'd like to thank all the aforementioned people. You'll see their names at the end on the graphics, but we'd like to thank them personally. They do a great job, starting with our head man, Rick Carnett, and our director tonight and producer, Dave D, and our engineer, Gary Black, and the rest of the crew. Frank Mole has really asserted himself here late in the season to become a factor here going into the playoffs for North Carolina. Yeah, as just a sophomore, he certainly acquitted himself well here as they go for the extra point try. It's Piper. Piper in for the extra point try. The kick is up. And the kick is good. And with 1.51 to go, it's now 28-7. North Tonawanda over Tonawanda. And we'd like to thank the people. Let's take a look at the touchdown. One more time, it's that same play that was stopped the pre two previous times they ran it. Prelowitz this time caught to the opposite side of the field as he was the tackler the last two times when they stopped Mole. This time he's not there. Mole takes it around the corner for his second touchdown of the game. Stopped in at the programming department, our head end at Brown Street and Lackawanna. We'll bring you back to the broadcast. Gary White in charge along with Scott Henderson, Debbie Brinker, Angela Riccioni, Adam Lean, and Dennis Sands. All working in the program department of local origination. Well, we really didn't expect North Tonawanda to win by this lopsided of a score, and it, it really has been sort of lopsided. Tonawanda has had their moments with their quarterback Dewey and then Kenny off the bench. Too many turnovers, what, six? Six, six total. Four interceptions, two fumbles. And maybe too much size by North Tonawanda. I'd say, I'd say that they were kind of dominated with their inability to get to the quarterback. Although NT didn't run the ball, they surely, surely gave Wisco a lot of good pass protection. We don't know how the playoffs are going to end up. It looks like North Tonawanda will get a spot with this win. It'll be interesting to see how they perform in the playoffs. They're on a roll going in. Siniskowski on the return. Makes a couple of good moves and then is dragged down near the 35. I don't know how far they could go, Frank, but talking to Wally Wisniewski, our player of the game after their win over Lockport, with the win over Lockport and this win tonight, the way their quarterback, the Wisco's playing, they got a legitimate shot of causing some damage. Wisco, I've got him 11 of 27 in the football game. It looks like Kumerski has come up with an injury. Dave Kumerski, there he is, number 39, is, he's banged up a little bit. Congratulations to Coach Glenn Bateman. This team has had a great year. They'll finish at five and three. Quarterback Kenny on a handoff and not much here. And you know that touchdown and points scored by North Tonawanda were the first points Frank given up. Were the first points uh, given up in the game. That was Peter Padilla, the new running back. Okay, and we've got a decide really quick here as there's a turnover apparently on the fumble well, let's double check that a lot of these substitute players coming in as there's no real pickup on the play and we've got to get a player of the game and I would go with Aaron Wisco as well Tough had, call. had a little Tough call, call from uh, the deep uh, the other side for the defense perhaps with Fisher with three interceptions but I got to go with Wisco Tough call. you also have to really give uh, Scott Mole serious consideration but we'll go with Wisco go with the senior we'll go with the senior Wisco who's had uh, a great passing season and get his thoughts about this game and then the upcoming playoffs if they do qualify. Now, the way we're reading it, they've got a great shot to qualify with this win. 109 to go. Scott Moore will have another day, a sophomore. He's had a great game, though. He or Fisher could have easily been the player of the game. Dewey back to pass. Throws under pressure. It's caught. 
nice reception. By Peter Padilla. Peter Padilla on the catch for the first down. I thought, no, I thought that was Dewey, but it was Kenny, excuse me, on the pass. Kenny with his uh, third completion. That was a pretty good pickup, though, from the 36. Well, Kenny has a live arm. He's a big guy at 6'3", 175. A little slender, but he'll put on weight. A little toss out here, incomplete. Intended for, would you believe, Jason Frazier, who's the middle linebacker on defense, and he's going to get a little taste of offense. 53 seconds to go. It's been a long year for our entire crew and us. As you look at Bensick, it's been a long year for Andy, too. He's had a great season. It's going to come to an end here. The senior. Tough way to go out. Kenny looking to pass. Fires low. Caught by Frazier. Good move by Frazier. And he's down near the 38. Continues to run 44 seconds. Ago. This is uh, our second to last game during the regular season. Can East and West will end it for our regular season coverage, and then we'll have playoff coverage for you. We'll see how extensive it will be depending on the matchups. Flags are down. Kenny in trouble, throws, and it's caught by Frazier, bobbled, and then called incomplete after the hit. 22 seconds to go. And as you look around the field, many people have started to leave, but still, still, by the Clinton 8 small clock, there's standing room only there, and they're all on their feet on the NT side. The points scored by NT were the first points given up by Tonawanda Frank in the fourth quarter of the season. And also, the surprising note here, Tonawanda will finish their home schedule at only one and three at home because they played such strong teams, losing to Grand Island, Amherst, and North Tonawanda. Yeah, there, no doubt about it. Uh, they played some formidable opponents in that level. They went, and they, they're getting better under Glenn Bateman. They had a very successful year here. They're they gonna went 4-0 uh, on the road. They're going to lose some tough players, though, with Prelowitz and, uh, and Bensick in the backfield. We'll make one other note right after this play. Make a point on it. Kenny throws. It's caught. Nice reception. First down yardage for Jeff Sherman, a junior, 5'9", 144 when you When you look at the Division Three school, like Atanawan, and you put them up against a Division One school, you really see the size differential, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And a lot more people on the roster than the Division One usually. They've got a lot more people to choose from. Kenny to pass, looking downfield, and it's dropped there. Sherman, who just made the earlier catch, couldn't handle that one. Yeah, the size difference is a big one here. There's no doubt. You take the Jamestowns, the North Tonawandas. The Lancaster's usually huge, and, uh, you know, you get you get in that level of play, and uh, Orchard Park, I think, is uh, is up there as well. West Seneca School, I think, is up Orchard there. Orchard Park, no doubt. Big teams, big size. Frontier. Frontier, right good, good ball club in Division One. Kenny, roll right. Could be the last play of the game. Frazier down with one second. The clock runs out. The ball game is over. The final score, 28-7, Frank, and North Tonawanda had this one in control early. Never let go of the lead as they race to a 21-0 lead. They use six turnovers and route to the big win, and they win it 28-7. Well, we'll be back with our player of the game, the final scoring and statistics, the final score in this one, North Tonawanda, 28, Tonawanda, 7. Aircraft's inbound, heading 350. We see them. The Air National Guard. Good luck, guys. Helping track and stop illegal drugs being flown into the U.S. Move it, move it. Before they hit the street. Thanks, Air Guard. We got them. Got them. Got them. on the human heart has changed the way people live and how long they live. 
death rate from heart attack had declined by a remarkable 30.9% since 1977, but it remains America's number one killer. So contact the American Heart Association, because what you don't know can kill you. Well, there you see the final score. North Tonawanda wins it 28-7 to over Tonawanda as they take it again against the Tonawanda Warriors. And our player of the game, and very deservingly so, he uh, played the inside linebacker position very well, or the outside linebacker position. He passed the ball extremely well, and it's Aaron Wisco. Our player of the game in the 28-7 victory for North Tonawanda over the Tonawanda Warriors is Aaron Wisco, the quarterback. And Aaron, we had you with a great night tonight, 11 completions in 27 attempts, and a touchdown, and uh, really led the team very well on the field. Yeah, we just played a great game. Our, our line really did a great job blocking both offense and defense and just freed things up in, in the secondary for us. Well, the way the game started out, you were pinned back in your own end of the field, and uh, our player of the game last week against Lockport, Wally Wisniewski, really pulled you guys out with a beautiful pass reception on a good throw. Yeah, well, it, well, it wasn't a really great throw. Wally just adjusted the ball real nice and made a great catch off it. But we had some good runs by Maul and Piper, and they just secured it for us. Okay, this type of wide-open offensive attack for a quarterback is like a dream, isn't it? Yeah, it's really great. Mr. DeLuca likes to pass a lot, so I have no problems with that. It's, Okay. You had uh, uh, talked about uh, the possibility of you guys getting in the playoffs, and you're one step closer. It's still not a lock yet, but uh, that's got to be a thrill getting back, to, if you can, to Rich Stadium. Yeah, that was our goal at the beginning of the season, to get to Rich, and we're just one step closer tonight, and we just had to hope the Orchard Park uh, beats Frontier, and hopefully we'll be in there. Okay. We want to take a minute to show this hardware, because you were listed as uh, the most valuable player from the North Tonawanda side of things, and Mark Prowlitz, by the way, was the most valuable player from the Tonawanda side of things. And one more question for you. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we came on about the possibilities of college football. Now, I, I know that you said you were thinking about it, but mom's not really not that sure, is she? Yeah, uh, so well, she'd rather see me play basketball. I don't know what kind of chance I got. She doesn't like the, all the contact and that, but I don't know. I'll give it a shot. Whatever comes up for me, we'll see what happens. Okay, congratulations and good luck the rest of the way. Good talking to you. Aaron Wisco, our player of the game, and we'll be back with our closing statistics and comments on Adelphia Cable. Jenny went to the hospital because she got sick and she almost died. Then she needed blood to live. Because if you don't have blood, then you won't live and you'll die. Where does blood come from? She got the blood from the Red Cross and get all better again. That's where blood comes from. From the Red Cross. Blood comes from people like you. Please give. Blood comes from your heart. Delphi Cable Sports, you see the final score, Frank, 28-7. North Tonawanda wins it. They really were never headed in this game. It puts them in position for a playoff spot. Yeah, it sure does. There's a good opportunity with uh, Aaron Wisco that uh, they were looking for Frontier to beat Orchard Park to really seal their uh, position in the playoffs, and Aaron Wisco is looking forward to getting perhaps another trip back to uh, Rich Stadium for the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks. They really had the opportunity to take the game early, and they took it, and that was the key. Well, one positive factor, about 10,000 people in attendance here, a great crowd. Well, you just can't believe the people that were here. It was wall-to-wall -wall all over, and when Tonawanda did score their only touchdown, the place was really rocking. Well, let's talk about the scoring summary in this one. In the first quarter, on their first drive, a seven-yard run by Mole as uh, he went and capped off a 93-yard drive for the touchdown, seven yards for Mole on the touchdown. Well, Scott Mole, just a sophomore, they called that play a number of times. There you see how it happened, and of course, the two-point conversion uh, proved to be successful as well. Right, it was a conversion pass, and they got the two points, and then in the second quarter, a 16-yard run by Piper, and Piper, a tough running fullback. Well, he almost didn't make it. You see him bounce a couple times to get into the end zone, but just enough according to one of the officials, and of course, the uh, extra point missed. Let's look at the pass from Wisco. And this was a 27-yard pass to Maines. Watch the block he'll get at the 10-yard line. You see it right there by Piper as he turns the corner in for the touchdown. Yeah, Piper helped him out, and of course, uh, Maines with that great speed was able to take it into the corner. Wisco's completed pass, build the lead to 21 to nothing, and that's where we stood at halftime. No scoring in the third quarter. Looked like Tonawanda would get back in it when just like this, a 77-yard pass. First.
first pass by Tim Kenny off the bench, the junior to Gross, and Gross takes it in, 77 yards for the touchdown. Well, what a thrill for the quarterback of the future for the Tonawanda Warriors to come into the game and launch a pass, a beautiful strike over the middle, and Gross just had to outrun the defense. And the first points given up by Tonawanda in any fourth quarter game this year, and it was Scott Moore going in from 12 yards out. Piper kicked the extra point for the final mark. And that made sure of the game that sealed it for North Tonawanda, and of course, they are successful once again in this end. TNT rivalry. And they continue to pad their lead. The final score 28 to 7 as they win it. And they also had a big statistical edge at halftime. It sort of closed a little bit as we went into the final statistics, as you'll see in a moment. The key statistic, the turnovers, six big turnovers on Tonawanda. Well, let's take a look at it. There it stands. As you see the first down, 17 to 13. Things evened up pretty much uh, throughout the course of the game as Tonawanda had pretty good time of possession. But as you go down the list and you see the totals, just take a look at the turnovers. Six turnovers for Tonawanda, none for North Tonawanda, four interceptions, two fumbles. That's the outcome of the game right there. Well, a big win for North Tonawanda. Tonawanda, Frank, uh, had high aspirations and hopes for a possible playoff appearance. If they could upset North Tonawanda going into the game, we thought it'd be a pretty even game. But uh, just too much defense and too much bulk by North Tonawanda. The turnovers uh, killed Tonawanda. Yeah, they sure did. And, of course, uh, Tonawanda's season comes to a close. A good, strong effort for them this year. Looking forward to next year as well. And for North Tonawanda, they're hoping for one more game. All right, for Frank Stewart and for Rick Carnath and Dave D, our leaders here on the broadcast all season long, and for our entire crew, this is Walter John Sears bidding you so long from Clinton Haight Small Stadium in Tonawanda, New York. But once again, the final score in this rivalry this year was the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks 28 and the Tonawanda Warriors 7. Have a good night, everyone.